This is CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. He isn't going to shoot it. Wrist shot again. Here's the rebound. Shanahan in front of the puck and scores! Stevens had it knocked down by Hines, but then it's Riche again. Firing! Score! Oh, what a shot that was. Here's Fedorov. Kozlov is in front. Coffey shoots it up there. Knocked down. Brown with a shot. Rebound. They score. Asha able to clear it around. After the saver, control the face off. Dobb up there by DeMaio. Here is Dykow. Bouncy puck. Bouncy puck went over the top of Hasek. The Sabres are trying to argue, but there is no argument here. The goal line is on, and the Flyers have won it in overtime. are always on their feet at this time of night and now it's united they stand there's a look at the beautiful new united center where they're getting set for game one of the western quarter final between the chicago blackhawks and the visiting toronto maple leafs and welcome back to the broadcast center in downtown toronto as we continue our coverage of night two and games one two games this evening alberta bc will be catching the san jose sharks calgary flames you are about to see the chicago blackhawks and the toronto maple leafs daryl sutter perhaps said it best they played 48 games against the same opponents it came down to the final game to determine who'd get the home ice the hawks get that edge toronto won the season series taking six of 10 points. Good evening and welcome to Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. I'm Ron McLean. More on the Hawks Leafs set up in just a moment. First, there were four matinee games today and one went uh, into OT as we left the air 90 minutes ago. So let's get you up to speed and begin with the game that was televised on Hockey Night in Canada. Blues leading 1-0 on a Brett Hall goal when Shanahan to Adam Creighton makes it two zip on the power play in the second period at the Kiel Center. Pavel Bure did score, but that was it. St. Louis nurses a one goal lead through 60 minutes to win and take a 1-0 lead in that series in St. Louis. Stefan Riche said he wasn't necessarily pumped for the game at Boston. He had three points, and Claude Lemieux had two goals. That Riche shot off Ray Bork and pass Blaine Locker is the game winner. The Bruins blanked in their home debut in the Stanley Cup playoffs 1995. The Philadelphia Flyers have to go in without Eric Lindros today. Uh, he watched his team win in overtime. Carl Dykhaus with the shot. It goes over Hoshik. That has to be a check bounce. That was the game-winning goal in OT. The Philadelphia Flyers, a huge victory. Goes without saying, 4-3. They defeat the Sabres, and the score was the same at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Dallas battled back from a 3-1 deficit to tie it, but then here's the winner. Slava Kozlov beats Andy Moog. Moog was terrific in this game for Dallas, and the Red Wings, uh, a lot of pressure right at the end. Mike Vernon came up big. There's the final, 4-3. The Wings lead their series one game to nine. So then, to set up the game in Chicago, let's go to the broadcast booth. Chris Cuthbert, Harry Neal, fellas. Thank you, Ron. We're getting set here as they introduce the two teams, Harry, and the atmosphere is starting to build. Uh, your thought on keys for the series? Well, I think the Leafs have to be careful that the revamped Chicago team doesn't outman them the way the Leafs outman them last year. They have to solve the Eddie Belfour problem. He is as hot as a firecracker coming in here. And the Chicago power play is first overall in the National League. And if the Leaf penalty killing, which is a good part of their game, isn't sharp, it could cost them the series. While specialty teams were such a key last year, the Leafs with nine power play goals, Chicago with just four, and that was a big difference in the series. Well, I'm not so sure that the Leafs are as a belligerent a team this year, and as a result, we may not see as many total penalties, which I think really helped the Leafs last year. Last year, the Leafs ran all over the Hawks physically. You can see these hits remind you of how, what a beating Chelios took, Suter took, Rolnick took. But the Chicago defense core is much deeper this year and much bigger. And I don't think Chelios and Suter are gonna play as much. And as a result, they may play better and be better longer. All right, we're getting set. The uh, Leafs with the edge in the season series, 2-1 with two ties. Ron? Chris, thanks very much. And you're right about uh, less aggressive, maybe, Harry. 72 PIM for Chris Chelio should get him the Lady Bing. Don Cherry would agree with that. He'll be along tonight. And his favorite player in the NHL, Doug Gilmore, is standing by now with Scott Russell. 
Doug Gilmore, the captain of the Leafs, back in the playoffs. And Doug, speaking of backs, uh, how about an update on yours? It's been a cause for some concern. Well, I guess uh, I missed one day, and obviously people uh, started jumping to con conclusions. But at the same time, it was a little sore, but it's, it was fine. I practiced the other day, and I felt good. The playoffs are always a chance for redemption. Uh, you've had a season that you would have liked to have been a better one. Uh, do you feel that now is the time to pick it up? Well, obviously, this time of year is the most important time of the year. Once you get to the playoffs, now you got to pick it up another notch. And I'm hoping that our team will come out and, and done what we've done in the past. And that's uh, it's going to be a disciplined game, a hard-working game, I guess a Pat Burns kind of style, but a very patient game as well. How about the Maple Leafs? They've had so many changes. It took some time to get to know the other players. Uh, do you believe you know them now and that they're ready to come together? I believe so. I think... Uh, this hockey club in the past couple weeks has came together. We've had some good games, more consistent games. Our last one was not the game that we want to remember, but previous to that, yes, we played well. And tonight, we got to play the same way. we got to come out hard and uh, keep pace with these guys, especially in the first 10 minutes. Doug, good luck tonight and the rest of the way. Hey, thank you. Thanks very much, Scott. Doug Gilmore, five points in five games against the Hawks this year. I saw Scott catch up with Jeremy Roenick moments ago. Roenick's not playing, of course. We'll be back with more coverage of Game 1 from Chicago in just a moment. 1967, that year, they got the Blackhawks in the first round and outscored them 18-14 to and won the series 4-2 to before going on to the final victory over Montreal. They've met eight times in their history of the Leafs and the Hawks again in 1986. And again, uh, last year, Toronto's won six of those eight playoff encounters. A year ago, as you well know, the whole story was about the goaltending of Felix Potvin. Three one nothing victories for the Leafs. The first game of the series was played at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The Leafs won that one by a score of 5-1. It's interesting Brian Lewis met with the coaches uh, in this series and said, look, of all the series going on in the first round, we want you to know you uh, like to play it aggressively. Bill Burke's supposed to be uh, designing his game to rub out Chris Chelios. No hanky-panky. And I know Don just really happy to hear the supervisors tell Daryl and Pat, please take it easy tonight. But uh, that'll be the theme of the evening. You saw how upset Pat Quinn was with uh, a lot of calls early in the Blues-Canucks game. Be the same tone, I'm sure, tonight. Uh, lots of questions about Felix's back, about uh, Dougie Gilmore's back, and uh, the Hawks without Jeremy Roenick. You can focus on Bernie Nichols. And maybe the biggest question of all for me, after all those great times at the Chicago Stadium, it was always a thrill to see Wayne Mesmer and Frank Pellico and the Star Spangled Banner. They're just putting the finishing touch is on the anthem now in Chicago and it was on while we were in commercial so we couldn't go there but let's find out how it sounded with Chris Cuthbert Chris all right Ron thank you very much good evening everybody spine tingling although maybe not quite as loud and thrilling as the old Chicago Stadium the building these two teams closed down last year in the playoffs Felix Potvin always seems to be at his best against the Chicago Blackhawks as Ron mentioned three playoff shutouts last year against the Hawks 2 1 and 2 this year and at the other end it's Eddie Belfour he anchored a third Jennings trophy for Chicago the 30 year old native of Carmen Manitoba unbeaten in his last six and he says he's heading into these playoffs on a high. There's Pat Burns, who's taken his team to the Final Four the last two years. Pat Burns is looking for his 40th playoff win in two years, plus tonight's game. That leads the National League. Daryl Sutter has not been the coach of a series-winning Chicago Blackhawk team yet. Matt Sundin will start at center. Benoit Hogue and Mike Gartner up front for the Leafs against the checking line of Chicago. Brent Sutter along with Dirk Graham and Murray Craven, 38 years of NHL experience on this starting line for the Blackhawks. <laughs> Leafs got a quick goal last year to open the series and goals were hard to come by a year ago between these two teams in the first round. Chris Chelios brings it around the boards and Craven. Last year with Vancouver gets it in the middle. Sutter hitting the line two on two and it's called on the offside. Well the Chicago Blackhawks have won five in a row to finish the season and so their lineup is the same except Cam Russell is back to miss 15 games with a fractured wrist. So he fills in for Greg Smith who had been playing in that spot. Here are the four lines that Coach Sutter has come up with. Nichols and Savard, the two offensive specialists, Shantz and Sutter, are in charge of checking. Well, Pat Burns has made a change now as Mike Ridley comes to center. Benoit Hogue 
Gets it out to center, and Gary Suter drops it in. Matt Sundin started the game at center and now has moved to the wing. As the Leafs clear it down the ice, Gary Suter is paired with Chris Chelios, and they're expected to log a lot of ice time, although the Blackhawks' defense a little deeper this year than it was last year in the first round. And a little bigger and a little more physical. I think we'll see a difference as this series unwinds from this year's defense score for the Hawks and last year. That was Steve Smith back in the lineup. He was out with a broken leg a year ago. And Gerald Diddick claimed traded right at the waiver deadline, 6'2", 214 pounds. He adds a physical dimension. Here's the scoring line for Chicago as the Leafs clear it over the glass out of play. Bernie Nichols now out with Tony Amati and Joe Murphy. Well, I think you're going to see that Pat Burns make a few lineup alterations within the group that he's dressing. The defenseman, he's going with the experience here in favor of Kenny Johnson, who is in his rookie year and has not played a game. And he is, I doubt that you're going to see these lines all night the way he's been playing them in the past. I think you're going to see Burns monkey around with him. When he finds three he likes, he's going to play the life out of them. And already we see an interesting move. Pat Burns has Doug Gilmore out with Dave Andrzejczyk. The first time we've seen this, maybe since February, out on a line with Mike Gartner. Looks to me like Burns might be trying to put his best six forwards offensively on two lines and his checkers and tough guys on the other two. Nichols knocked Gilmore down behind the net, but the Leafs come up with it and slowly through center. Garth Butcher gets to the red line, clears it in. First man after it, Jamie McCowan Gartner had a chance at the side of the net, cleared away, and Tony Amante will start back. Hands it off to Steve Smith and ahead to Bernie Nichols, who's been struggling of late. Nichols gets it into Joe Murphy. He's hooked up and slowed up by Butcher. Nichols without a goal since March 31st in a game against the Leafs. 16 without a goal for Nichols as Murphy backhands it weak and wide. But he has had six assists in the last five games as they're unbeaten. So he, the goals are hard to get, but the assists are coming nicely. Well, Bernie averaged over a point a game for the Hawks this year, and that's what he vowed to do when he signed as a free agent from New Jersey. Berg clearing it in as the Leafs make changes. Kent Manderville out now with Billy Berg, who crashes into Cam Russell, returning to the Hawks lineup. First time in five weeks coming off a broken hand. Here's Ellett dumping it in. Bouncing puck in on Belfour, and Rich Sutter, the former Hawk, after it. Sutter looking for it. Here's Todd Gill with a weak shot, but there was traffic in front, and Belfour had a little trouble hanging on. And we're just over three minutes in, but the intensity is starting to intensify here. And it looks like Paul Dvorsky is calling the first penalty of the game. A skirmish in front of the net ends up in a penalty to number eight, Russell Manderville, who hasn't played in a long time, came down with a stick right across the shoulder of Russell, but escaped the attention of referee Dvorsky. So the Leafs get an early power play here in this series. Their power play during the year was 15th in the league and the Hawk penalty killing ninth. But for a great period of time late in the year, the Leafs without their key point men, Dave Ellett and Dmitry Miranov, but they're back out now, healthy. And Ellett's shot doesn't get through. And the Hawks will send the power play unit back. Well, last year in the series that the Leafs won 4-2, they had nine power play goals. And that, perhaps more than anything, statistically, was the difference. Andrew checks up front with Sundin and Gilmore as Ellett pounds it in. Miranov and Ellett had nine power play goals between them last year in the playoffs. Scrum along the boards, Brent Sutter killing some time, kicking it free, and it's Chelios who will send it 200 feet down on Felix Potvin. 40 seconds gone in the penalty. As Miranov works his way out to center ice. Getting by Amati and clearing it in. Rings the boards, Ellett keeps it there. Here's Gilmore in the corner. Has Miranov moving in. And the puck bouncing over his stick. Here's Miranov a shot. Sundin, wrap around, scores! Well, Matt Sundin in his seventh career playoff game and his first in the blue and white uniform beats Balfour on the wraparound to give the Leafs a one-nothing lead. 
And you can see that no hawk in sight. A nice little pass or a rebound comes off the goaltender Balfour and then Sundin beats him around the net and beats Chelios with that long reach, those soft hands, and that great patience. All that adds up to one nothing Leafs. Matt Sundin, who led the Leafs in goal scoring with 23 during the regular season, scores the first of the playoffs at 4.05 on the power play. And the Leafs have the first playoff goal at the United Center. And we should make a point that it is not a full house here at the United Center tonight. That's a bit surprising. Well, the Bulls are on television. The White Sox are at home, and it was 75 degrees and sunny without much of a win today. Sundin, the power play goal. Miranov and Gilmore get the assists with Cam Russell in the penalty box. Here's Priva Krasov. Gerald Diddick at center ice, flipping it in and going after Jim Cummins. Bumping there with Butcher. And now it's flipped up by Di Pietro, who took a hit by Kriva Krasa. Big Grant Jennings over center ice. He'll pound it in on Belfort. And Diddick takes over. Out to center ice. Denny Savara is out for Chicago. Here's Ridley moving in with Benoit Ho. Ridley tied up, Hogue takes over, drops it back, Butcher shot. That hit tied Domi in front. Now it comes out to Savar and then he'll skate to center. This is the French connection too, as he leaves it for Poulin, the shot. Patrick Poulin back to Savar. The other member of the line is the world junior star, Eric Daze, number 55. Butcher taking Poulin to the boards. Ridley fighting for it there against Denny Savar. And it comes clear for Ty Domi, and he'll flip it out to center ice. Savar just knocked Domi down with a bone crusher. Ah, uh, the adrenaline is flowing, and Denny Savar returning after 10 years in the hot uniform. Well, Leafs lead here. Let's get an update from the broadcast center. Here's Ron McClain. Okay, Chris, Calgary Flames do something they didn't do in game one last year versus Vancouver, and that's score a goal. Paul Cruz gets it from McCarthy and Kesmer. 226 in, a bit of a bad goal for Urbe. And so the Flames on the first ever playoff goal for Cruz lead. Well, here in Chicago, Sergei Krivo Krasov in his first playoff game in the National League levels Ty Domi with a strong body check along the boards. In the Leafs with a line of Gilmore, Andrichuk, and Gartner. Seeing its second shift is Amante dancing in, trying to cut in, and hot man down. Covered up on the play with Miranov on Amante. Out at center ice, Tony Amante with it again. A four-goal scorer last year in game three of the series between the Leafs and the Hawks. Now Gilmore against the boards. Gartner with Chelios watching him and knocking him down. Chelios outlets it to Gary Suter. Suter had the hat trick in game four at Chicago Stadium last year, and Suter takes off. Centered for Amati, who missed the pass, and Gartner starts back. With only Chelios back, Gartner's shot is blocked. Gartner, who scored the last goal at Chicago Stadium, worked off the puck, and on the far side, Joe Murphy flips it high to center. Just over seven minutes gone, first period, and the Leafs leading 1-0 on a power play goal by Matt Sundin. Butcher sends it in, Rich Sutter a stride in, ahead of the play, offside, here at the United Center. Here's why you like Chris Chelios. Boy, when it's a battle for the puck, if you keep a stat of how often he comes up with it, he must lead the National League in that one. A real strong man on his stick. Daryl Sutter was telling us that he cut Chelios's ice time seven or eight minutes a game for the last couple of weeks, and he is fresh now for the playoffs. He won't be cutting his ice time now. Here's Craven trying to center it. 
Dirk Graham puts it back behind the net. Craven there puts it out in front off the paddle of Felix Potvin, and the Leafs clear it out. Manderville, Sutter, and Berg. A checking line for the Leafs. And now here comes Chicago. Here's a shot on Potvin, and he makes the save off Eric Weinrich, and Rich Sutter takes off. Up ahead to Manderville. He clears it in, bumped by Russell, and Weinrich back to get it. Clears it up on the right side. Murray Craven is there. Turned back by Manderville, but Dirk Graham follows. Graham to the line. Chicago making a change. And now Kripa Krasov with a shot wide. Benoit Ho drops it off, and Dave Ellett will lead the Leafs through center ice. Long shot on Belfour. Around the boards, Kripa Krasov. Ahead to Jeff Chance, former Regina Pat. On the left side, Weinrich moving up, Potvin out of the net. Wraps it around the boards, and it comes to Ridley with Sundin breaking. Out at center ice for home with Sundin, drops it off the shot, and he blasted that one just wide. Sundin looking for his second. In behind the net, Hope trying to center it. And the loose puck picked up by Jim Cummins. Cummins out to center ice with Chance. Cummins with a shot that goes wide. And ahead it comes for Ridley. With Matt Sundin, the goal scorer. Nice pass, Todd Gill moving in, and that deflected high. Gilmore puts it back behind the net, and Belfour stops it up there for Chelios. Patrick Poulan looking for the veteran, Denny Savar. At the line, Andrzejczyk chopped it, but Chelios moves up. Nine and a half minutes gone, first period at the United Center, and the Leafs with a one nothing lead. Here's Suter shot through traffic, puck fan down, and he'll cover up. And with another Stanley Cup update, let's join Ron McClain. This two minutes and 18 seconds after Paul Cruz gave Calgary the one nothing lead, the Sharks bounce back. Igor Larionov sets up Sergei Makarov, who historically has played poorly at Calgary, but scores the goal there. Whitney draws the other assist, and it's tied 1-1 at the Olympic Saddle Dome. Well, Manderville, a, kind of a surprise starter, but I think Pat Burns wants to get some more size in center ice, and he's not quite big enough to fend off a good check by Russell. This is going to be a physical series. The Leafs are, have a little more physical lineup than they have had if Manderville will play with a burr under his side. Here's Gartner moving in. Puck is loose. Andrzejczyk reaching for it. Cleared away by Denny Savar. Poulin has trouble with it. Now Chicago gets it out. And into the Leaf zone for Mirana. So the Gilmore line right now is matched up against Denny Savar and the youngsters. Gartner with the shot. Blocked by Gary Suter. Gilmore takes a look and a bump, puts it in front. Andrew Chuck sprawling in front, but Eddie Belfour down to make a save off Dave Andrew Chuck. Goals against this year, the lowest of his career. Three Jennings trophies he and his teammates have earned in the last five years for the best goals against average in the National Hockey League, or the fewest goals against. That's a tough trophy to win, boy, and every Hawk should be proud of it because they have their fingerprints on it, not just the goal. Here's a chance for Manderville, and he snapped the shot on Belfour. Manderville still looking for his first goal of the year. And thought he should have got a penalty there as Belfour fields the shot from the point. And again, traffic in front, and I think Mr. Manderville has that burr you were talking about. Pretty sure Pat Burns placed it there. <laughs> Manderville has been a whirling derby shot here today. Now, Rich Sutter can be a pain in the rear end on any given night. <laughs> it looks like he's adopted that attitude. He's played for Chicago six games last year in the playoffs. And he was pumped this morning when I saw him come to the rink. I asked him, I said, do you phone your brothers when the playoffs are on? He said, yes, I do. We had a short conversation last night. He said, I wish them that they played well, but their team didn't win. Well, and th this is a, a preset tradition in the Sutter family. Rich Sutter's family still lives here in Chicago, so his wife and uh, 
Brent's wife drive down together and sit together during the season. But in the playoffs, when the Hawks are playing the Leafs, they drive down together, they sit apart, they come back and drive back together. <laughs> so the Sutters have got it all figured out. They would have to with six of them. Well, this line produced a good scoring chance before the penalties were assessed. Well, I think that you have to take these two defensemen out as Sutter just did there, Suter and Chelios. And after you've gone to them in the offensive zone or the neutral zone, stay with them. Don't let them off the hook. Make them play the game in a crowd. They are two brilliant hockey players. None, no hockey player that I've seen plays as well when somebody's five feet from him. But he does when he has some ice. Now look at Daryl Sutter, and he wasn't that happy when Bob Pulford traded his younger brother earlier this year to Tampa Bay, was not consulted on the deal. Well, what, they knew what he was going to say. He was going to say, he's my brother, don't trade him. So that's the only way to do it. Tell him after the trade and tell him to get over it. So Belfour and Sutter are penalized, and Tony Amonti will serve the Chicago minor penalty. And it's four-on-four four hockey. With Gilmore turning back in his own zone. Ellis and Gill are back, and Randy Wood is up front with Gilmore. And Wood intercepts the pass. Craven and Sutter are up front for Chicago as Gill moves into the corner. Turns it back to Dave Ellett. Ellett sends it deep. Gilmore in the corner. Watched by Chelios. Flipped in front and batted away by Belfour. Chelios hit by Wood. Got it to Gary Suter. And now Craven will start out. Here's Craven dropping it off. Suter's shot. Doesn't get through. Off Miranoff to the corner. And he pushes it ahead to Ellett. Eight and a half minutes left, first period at the United Center, and the Leafs leading on a goal by Matt Sundin, who's spun around and knocked down. Sundin still trapped inside the line by Suter, and here's some room for Miranov moving in. Drops it off, Sundin snapped the shot, blocked by Chelios. Good defensive play, and the Hawks in transition. Murphy on the move, snaps the shot. Joe Murphy led the Hawks in goal scoring with 23. Can't keep it in. And it's Sundin. The leap leading goal scorer turning back. 23 seconds left in the coincidental minors. I think the Leafs, when they shoot it in, have got to keep the puck away from Balfour. Make him come out and get it if he wants it. But don't put it right on his stick because he's pretty good with it. And he'll make the initial good pass. Now the Hawks move it ahead to Bernie Nichols. Here's Nichols hanging on to it. In front, Steve Smith went to the net. And now the penalized player is back on the ice. Mike Ridley giving off to Dave Ellett. And the lead veteran defenseman ahead to Gartner. That failed to click. Following up is Butcher. And he'll flip it into the Hawk zone. 7-11 left, first period. Savar missed Poulin with the pass, and it slides down into the Leaf zone. Gill back to get it. I don't think Poulin was ready for that pass. If he'd been going, that pass would have been right on the tape. Russell back to Denny Savar. Four goals, four assists in 12 games since his return to Chicago. Jennings, a couple of Stanley Cup rings with Pittsburgh. Gets it ahead, and now Gilmore. Over to Andrichuk. Andrichuk to the line, dumps it into the corner. Belfort plays it around for Poulin. And now Savar. Denny Savar thrilled to be back in Chicago. Nice pass there, bad angle shot, and Cummins almost found a little room on the short side. Cleared out to center, but Chelios was there for Chicago. Jim Cummins with the best chance so far for the Hawks. On a nice pass by Denny Savar. Ty Domi bumped at center by Kripa Krasa. And big Grant Jennings back to get it. He's hit by Chance. Jeff Chance can't control the puck behind the net. Chicago up with it now, though. Kripa Krasa trying to spin away. He's checked, and back comes Domi for the Leafs. 
Ty Domi fires it in. Randy Woods on left wing. Di Pietro is the center iceman now on this line. New lineup. Domi put it in front. Loose puck. And it was just knocked wide by Di Pietro. Hawks flip it out to center under five and a half minutes left in the first period. Still one nothing leaps on a power play goal by Matt Sundin. Well, both teams checking lines have had some success for check outside Domi can't get a good shot away. He's wrestled down by Gary Suter. Chelios knocked down from behind. Fans react. And Domi pries the puck loose. Brent Sutter gives it back to Chelios. Takes the return speed out at center. Hit by Hogue and the Leafs will take over. Long pass for Sundin too far. Didick off the boards. McCowan to Butcher. Off the stick of Ridley and Gary Suter has it now. Lead pass too far for the captain, Dirk Graham. And it slides into the leap zone. Up for Sundin. Steve Smith watching him. Hawks called offside as Didick leads the rush in with 425 left in the first period. Sights we saw this morning coming to practice. This is all that remains of the old Chicago Stadium. The wrecking ball can erase the building, but not the memories for anyone who is privileged enough to see a game in that rink. And this is the first playoff game ever at the United Center. Joe Murphy behind the net. Bernie Nichols back to Murphy. Trying to get away from Mike Ridley. Puck comes in front and McCowan up with it. Here's Matt Sundin breaking. Steve Smith, lone man back for Chicago as Sundin couldn't pull the trigger. Tried to get it to Ridley and now Tony Amonti speeds away. Here's Amonti moving in and Potvin the same. Nichols rebound and what a stop by Potvin. Best chance for the Hawks, and Bernie Nichols continues to struggle offensively for Chicago. Now it's Andrew Chuck. I can't to Gardner. Gardner in. Can't pull the trigger on that move. Mike Gardner in alone. So chances at either end. Ellen the drive, and it's swept into the goal post by Steve Smith. Here's Gilmore side of the net. Andrew Chuck shot doesn't get through. Great action here with 3.13 to go. First period still 1-0. Todd Gill taking Cummings into the corner and they tie it up long enough for a faceoff after great chances at either end of the ice. And then the puck rolls off the stick as he tries to go to the forehand and put it up top. Steve Smith in front of the net and pulls it out as it's going in as it wiggles through a Dave Ellis shot from the point. Both goalies look sharp. Eddie the Eagle at one end and Felix the Cat at the other in this animalistic show of goaltending. <laughs> and 3-0-1 to go first period. The lone goal by Matt Sundin who scored five against Chicago during the regular season. Matt Sundin looks like he's wired for these playoffs. His first game for the Leafs. He's had two opportunities to score and has scored once. Good look at Jeff Chance, who's been waved out of the circle now. Up there with Poulin. And Daze taking the spot for Denny Savard for the first time. Chance has the puck. Skates at Gilmore there for the Leafs. Now it's pushed in front, pulling the shot. And Potvin was down, and the Leafs start back with Gill. Long shot in on Belfour. Cleared ahead, Patrick Poulin. Down the ice for Chicago. And back to get it, Garth Butcher. The Leafs making a change as the puck cleared ahead to Randy Wood. On the near side, it comes to Butcher. He'll send it in deep for Toronto. The trouble with line matching, it means you have to change a lot on the fly, and it cost the Hawks a breakaway against them as they did it the last time, and Gartner walked in and just missed. Suter got by Di Pietro, cleared it in for Chicago. Jamie McCallum back to get it. 
veteran of Stanley Cup playoff competition. McCowan in his 124th game. Cleared around near sides. Harry Suter had Domi in a bear hug. Di Pietro was bumped. But Domi made a good play there, Chris, because as much as Suter took Domi, Domi took Suter on the pitch. Now Murray Craven is in. Craven looking for Brent Sutter. Sutter has it in the corner. Graham side of the net. Craven with the shot. That was blocked by McCowan. Cam Russell moves up to keep it in. Craven back to Dirk Graham. Graham's had trouble scoring of late. Hasn't scored a goal in 22 games. Side of the net. Gets it over to Craven. Back to Graham. Bumped by Butcher. And now the Hawks work it free. Sutter just missed coming out in front with it. And it gets out to center ice. And we're now down to one minute remaining. First period and the Leafs protecting that one goal lead. Gerald Diddick clearing it back in. Tony Amonti has it on the near side. Rings the boards. Murphy after it, but McCowan has it for the Leafs. Steve Smith now gave it away, and Benoit Hoag scampers after it. Here come the Leafs. Hoag drives the shot. Belfour off the pads, and Nichols picks up the rebound. Bernie Nichols with Amonti, and Gerald Diddick jumping into the rush, and Diddick just couldn't find the pass between the skates. Here's a centering pass, and Murphy drills it wide. The Leafs hanging on a bit in this final minute. Diddick rolls it back in. As time ticks down, Dave Ellett. Flipping it out to the blue line. Steve Smith with it there. As the clock winds down in the first period here at the United Center. So the power play goal by Matt Sundin, the lone marker of the first period. Coming up, first intermission, Don Cherry's in the coach's corner with Rod McClain. So after 20 minutes at the United Center, it's the Leafs one, the Hawks no score. Coach's Corner with Don Cherry. By the way, Mike Rafchi and Ulf Dahlen have just scored 3-1 to one San Jose uh, late in the first Detroit. period at the Saddle Dome, and of course, one none here. Detroit. That, um, mm. Mm. Well, no well, Neuendijk, no Roberts out there. They got a lot of problems. Yeah, and uh, uh, Brian Lewis has done his job on us. Uh, no hitting. I call this, the players call this game so far. It's a pretty exciting game, but uh, we call it a, a Nolan Ryan. We, no hitter. Not an Owen Nolan game. No, Owen Nolan. Yes. Okay, uh, how about him? The Quebec Nordiques last night, you got to admit. Nolan Ryan or what's something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I know what you mean. <laughs> no hits. Uh, plenty of them last night, including one that uh, we want to. What did you think of the game, though, before you show Wendell? You know, I got to tell you something, that uh, when you blow a 4-2 lead and in the playoffs in the third period, that is, that, that's tough. That's a killer. And to come back, and I, I'm questioning uh, and I, uh, Richter, how does Richter go from last year, the best goaltender in the league, to, to where he is now? It, it, that's a tough thing to go. Did not play well last night. I bet you Healy's in there before. They got to rally the troops, and if anybody can do it, Messier can do it. In Mike Richter's defense, uh, okay. he gets, he makes the save. Netcam buries him there. I mean, he got it. It went off his head. He gloved it still. I'm not knocking. I'm Great just saying. Great pass by Owen Nolan. Couldn't oh. stop that one. Well, were we going over the whole game? Oh no. What about that? All right. Up? I'm just saying he didn't play that well. He's got to play. Got to play better. He want to win the Stanley Cup. That's what I said. Now. Wendell Clark, as they call him in Quebec now, Wonder Clark. Did you know that? No. The guy is like a shark. I'll tell you this. Uh, last night, things are going along pretty tough there, 4-2 or something. He looks, who's the best defenseman by far for New York that led them in points last year? Zuboff. Let's just take a little hit right now, what he did to Zuboff. This guy is unbelievable. I love Wendell Clark. Now watch this. Here he comes. Zuboff is a good eye. They were winning, I think, waggle. I mean... Is that the way to do it? Keep your head up, look out. Coming through, clean hit. Turns around, turn the game around right there. Now, you remember, now, well. That's it. That, it was sort of like I was gonna, like. Build it up a little more? I was gonna sort of build it up a little more and talk about it, but. Uh, what I was gonna say, I was gonna say, do you remember last year in the Chicago series, that uh, Chelios, the best defenseman, who did he do it to? Straighten him out, turn the game around. 
Wendell Clark is unbelievable. That's why the guy, everywhere he goes, I said when Dale Hunter left Quebec, there goes the playoffs. I said when Wendell Clark goes to Quebec, look out for Quebec, and he done it. By the way, Dale Hunter, did you know that Dale Hunter uh, left? You know why they get rid of Dale Hunter? No, I can't because believe he it, broke. Yeah, I know. They, he broke his leg. He went back in the playoffs, and he played with uh, screws, and they were loose like that, and they got rid of him. Never been the same since. Let's just see. Now, last night, wait a minute. Don't run it yet. Uh, last night, I'm watching the game. I see Dale Hunter before the game. I can tell he's ready. Asked Ron Harrison. I said he was a bull terrier. Watch out tonight the same way as I did against Todd Harvey. Remember? Yes. Todd Harvey, and he gets a hat trick. I wanted to get an update. I wanted to take that goal and really. Uh, oh, in the first period, and we yes. showed the goal, and you didn't get it for Coach's yes. Corner. Yes, you remember that? We're yes. On top of everything. Here. Yes, you're really up to date. Wonderful entertainment. Anyhow, he gets four points, and I would have gone on and looked like a hero then against Harvey. But let's take a look at it now. You don't mind if I show you? You've got the... a chance to cover up tonight. Let's go, Dale Hunter. Last night, Dale two Hunter. performance. Now watch four this point here. Eight. Beautiful goal. There goes Mork. Right in there, way to go. He looks like Mork from Mork. Yeah, I know he did. does. All right, now watch this here one. A beauty goal he gets right here. I love this guy right here. Puts it in like this. Isn't that nice? Now look, kids. He puts the goal in. He doesn't jump around like an idiot. Tell you, boy, that's the kind of beat. You, you know, said you need it. Go ahead. Okay. You know, hey, the Legion, too, by the way. Don't forget. No, Maritime Legion. Beautiful tomorrow. Greatest guys in the world. VE day to day. Now, there's one thing i got to have 30 seconds. Oh. There was something said on Hockey Night in Canada, very upsetting to me. Was It was said and suggested that Jeremy Roenick was playing for his contract, and he was sitting out not because he was injured, it was because of his contract. Can you imagine saying that like a Boston boy? It was by a Vancouver guy. Should know all about that. We should know. And you sat there. Jim Houston was just referring to a story. Yes, it's well documented. You sat the there, there. You sat there. I know for a fact Jeremy Roenick is your good friend. Yes. You sat there and never defended him. I thought I expected a lot more from a guy from Alberta to stand up for a friend. I just wanted to say that. Jeremy Roenick would never do that. He's a wonderful person. Perfect. Does that mean now that Pulford should go and punch him in the head? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, as far as Dale Hunter, the one thing I will say about the screws in his leg, uh, him not making it stupid, you're right. I've seen a lot of very successful people with screws loose. Sometimes it's just the threads are faulty. In any event, Don Cherry in the Coach's Corner on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Featured the Leafs and the Canadians. The first four games have been decided in overtime. Toronto leading 3-1. To Toronto had a great defense led by brash young Bill Barilko, a bone-jarring defenseman who'd leave his mark on the sport by scoring the Stanley Cup winning goal in overtime. Tragically, the goal would be the last for Barilko, who died in a plane crash weeks later. Stanley Cup legends. McSaddled home score tied 1-1 in the first period when Mike Rafty shot actually went off Stern. Peterson and Dolan draw assists. I made it 2-1 at 1446. 229 later off Dolan scores. He jams it home from Friesen and Moore. San Jose was outshot 12-7, but they lead 3-1 at the end of 20 minutes. It's 1-0 at Chicago. More from there after this. might be like through that first period? Well, I think it's going to be a grinding series. Uh, both teams play a physical style. Both teams play pretty well defensively. I thought we were waiting and watching a little bit that period. Uh, kind of like two heavyweights kind of sizing each other up. But, uh, you know, I think that we have to just be a little sharper in every area. I mean, uh, we can't allow guys to have breakaways. We can't allow uh, odd man situations. And when we get those opportunities on pod, we have to bear down. Here are the numbers on the first 20 minutes. The Leafs so shooting the Hawks 11 to 6. And Matt Sundin with the power play goal on a wraparound from Miranov and Doug Gilmore. Sundin grabs the puck, and you can see that Belfer had no chance to get up, to get across. He was on his back. And here's another look, and you can see he just gets it by Chelios' stick. And Belfer is sprawling over like a wet fish and can't get down in time. Hot fan made a couple of great stops. Tony Amante, one of the fastest Hawks, outlakes Butcher to get this shot and watch the stop on Bernie Nichols. Right there, looked like a sure goal. Nichols, 16 games without a goal. And if he'd been scoring at a regular pace, he probably would have put that in. But when you're not, you can't beat the goals. And 
for 20 minutes anyway, the storyline following the same pattern as the first round series between these two teams a year ago. The Leafs again scoring with the man advantage and Felix Potvin looking sharp. Of the 11 Leaf shots, six came from defenseman three off the stick of Todd Gill. Well, goals four looked like a problem again for the Hawks. Ten in six games last year, only three forwards scored. Six in four games the year before against St. Louis. Six goals four. That Here's puts an awful strain on your goaltender. Unfair. There's Todd Gill trying to shovel the puck in the corner. Brent Sutter was there, and he gets it ahead, and Chris Chelios is on the move. Chelios with Dirk Graham. Dave Ellett providing defense as the puck is centered and cleared away by Gill back out to center. Well, you look at the 10 goals last year, three by Gary Suter in one game, four by Amonti, and just three by the rest of the Hawks in the six games. Well, Potvin shut him out three times, one nothing. And the Hawks, without Roenick especially, look like that goal scoring's a bit of a problem again. But it is early. 21 minutes in. Here's Ridley taking a hit from Bernie Nichols at the line as we welcome viewers of the Calgary Flames and the San Jose Sharks to the United Center. Chris Cuthbert, Harry Neal, Scott Russell, and the Hockey Night in Canada crew. Just nicely underway, second period. The Leafs leading 1-0 on a power play goal by Matt Sundin as Joe Murphy wheels into the zone for Chicago and blasts the shot wide. Nichols dumps it into the corner, and Doug Gilmore there for the Leafs. Here's Gilmore hopping out to center, hauled down from behind, and Joe Murphy will take over. Gives it to Chelios. Ahead it goes to Tony Amante. Amante looking for Nichols, broken up by McCowan. Cleared back in by Gerald Diddick, and McCowan is there for Toronto. Hawks making a change. Savar over the boards with Eric Daze and Patrick Poulin. Lead pass for Berg goes by him, sliding into the Chicago zone and sent ahead to Daze. He just got rid of it at center ice. Bill Berg is there, and he'll dump it back in for Toronto. Daze, eight goals at the World Junior Championships in seven games. Pushes it forward, and here's Denny Savar. Bumped by Manderville, but sends it in deep, and Daze after it, gets it back. Steve Smith's shot, that goes into the corner. Berg trying to get it by Didick, who's pinching in, kept in by Chicago and Savar. Twisting out of the corner, checked for Pula, picks up the loose puck. Watched by Miranov. Miranov missed the check, it's in front, puck man down! And Bill Berg will come up with it for Toronto. Smith with a hit on Berg. And the Hawks clear it back in. Obviously, the Hawks have been told to get physical with the Leafs, and they have been in this period much more so than in the first. Well, you heard Paul Baxter's assessment that the few of the Hawks were standing around in period number one. Jim Cummins dumps it out to center ice. And out Ty Domi. Randy Wood on left wing as Domi fires it in. And the puck deflecting into the crowd in behind at Belfour. We played 3-10 here in the second period. Matt Sundin has the only goal. Every scouting report on the Hawks say to the wingers, watch the pinching defenseman. Berg cannot get the puck by Diddick, and there was all kinds of problems after. 73rd playoff game for Gerald Diddick. Six foot two, 210 pounds, and you don't want to get hit by him if you can avoid it. So, wingers, you've got to take a peek to see if the pinching defenseman's on his way. If he is, you've got to stop the puck or take him up. Big assignment. Here come the Hawks. Kriva Krasov trying to come out in front. He was checked, and Randy Wood will start back for the Leafs. Ahead to Di Pietro, he dumps it in, and Ty Domi will give chase with Cam Russell. Di Pietro just chops it in behind the net. Chance there for Chicago. Now it's Di Pietro. Stanley Cup winner two years ago in Montreal. They tied up for a faceoff. Well, this line has done some good forechecking, and Pat Burns is using a combination of players on his third and fourth lines and is sticking pretty well with his revamped first and second line. Clear. 
You'll find guaranteed low prices at your Canadian Tire store every day. If you find a better price anywhere, we'll match it. Guaranteed. Well, Pat Burns is going to play his best players a lot. He's up Doug Gilmore's ice time. I think you have to get him up to 30 minutes a night. And you can see right here, these two horses play half of every period. And as the game gets close, as most of them are going to be and gets late, they play more. Well, Pat Burns has already developed a big story here tonight, reuniting Doug Gilmore and Dave Andrichuk for the first time since February. And juggling the lines, new lines that we haven't seen quite some time for the Leafs for the first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs in Toronto as we approach the four-minute mark of the second period has a 1-0 lead. Murray Craven up the boards, kept in by Miranov. Craven gets it back and backhands it through center ice. Just missed Chelios, who had popped up on the rush that time. The two Leaf wingers have got to be sure that number seven and number 20, Chelios and Suter for the Hawks, can't go where they want to go after they pass it, and they can't indiscriminately throw it to each other, which they often do, but in the first period, only three times did they complete passes to each other. That's a way below the normal. Here's a chance for Sundin drilling the shot right on Belfour. And Matt Sundin's had a number of good scoring chances already. Brent Sutter starts back for Chicago. Over the line, his shot doesn't get by Butcher. Dropping it off behind the net. Mike Ridley's there for the Leafs. He lost it. Here's Graham shooting it just wide of the target. Chelios has moved up. Sutter behind the net, can't handle the puck. Now gets it. And Sutter to Graham. Chance for Graham, and he just shot it wide. Chelios has moved up along the boards, and he's tied up. Real battle going on there between Chelios and Hogue, and out skates Mike Gartner. Fakes the shot. Gartner fires right on, and Belfour will hang on for Chicago. Well, you can get under the skin of Chelios, and Benoit Hogue did a nice job on Chelios along the boards in the offensive zone. He was a rewarded with a little bit of a fancy elbow to the nose. You can see by that nose, it's had the odd elbow before, and here he is right here. He's taking Chelios. Chelios doesn't like it. And who would? And as they break up, Chelios gives him the stick. How do you like the taste of that tape, he says, Benoit. But that's what the Leafs have to do. Get after the Hawks' best two defense pair, Chelios and Suter. Try and neutralize them. 133rd playoff game for Chris Chelios. Stanley Cup ring from 1986. And of course, played for Pat Burns later in his days in Montreal. And I've talked to Pat many times about Chelios. He is a great admirer of Chris Chelios. Here's Andrew Chuck at center ice. Takes a look, feeds to Mike Gartner speeding in. Turns back, Miranov's moved up on the play. Nichols knocks him down. Andrzejczyk loses control, but Gilmore's there. Puts it back in the corner, and Andrzejczyk will forecheck. Nichols up the boards. Murphy can't handle it, but Steve Smith sends it rink wide. Now Nichols in the middle, back out to Amati on left wing. Tony Amati trying to speed in. Amati behind the net, trying to center it. Doug Gilmore all over him. Now it's Nichols centering it off the stick of Gartner. And a race for it. Gartner going after it. But Diddick came across for Chicago. Lead pass too far for Amati. Chicago making a change as Doug Gilmore with an assist in that first period. Now with 64 points for the Leafs in Stanley Cup playoff action. Here's Gilmore moving in, and a centering pass was swept away by Weinrich. That saved the goal, and back comes Poulin. Patrick Poulin down the left side, dropped it off. Shot in, hit Denny Savar, and the Leafs come up with it. Huck is bet ahead to Rich Sutter, and he'll dump it in. Cam Russell behind the net. He's knocked down by Sutter. Manderville forechecking, but it's out to Savar. And Weinrich with Poulin. Patrick Poulin back to Weinrich, and he shot that less than a foot wide. At the line, but kept in by the Blackhawks. Suter with the glove. Leafs now getting it out. Manderville on the right side for Sutter. Hit by Denny Savard. 
Eric Daze with the loose puck. And he sends it in behind Felix Potvin. One nothing Toronto, 12 and a half minutes to go, second period at the United Center. Todd Gill at center ice, can't control it. Rich Sutter came back, and now Potvin plays it into the corner. Chance leaving it for Cummins. Kriva Krasov keeps, and then is, has his shot blocked, and a penalty is coming up. Nice move by Kriva Krasov. Todd Gill fencing with Suter, and a penalty coming up. The best power play in the 48-game schedule in 1995 will get a chance to show it. You can see Manderville has a hold of Cummins' stick right here. Behind the net. And Dvorsky saw him and caught him, and the Leafs penalty killing fifth best in the National League. Tangle with the most prolific power play the National League saw this year. The great matchup and two great point men, Suter and Chilios fired. Rebound and another big stop. Bernie Nichols has had a couple of glittering opportunities. Chelios to set it up. Wheeling away now is Suter. And Murphy hopped in ahead of the play on left wing offside. Defensive zone faceoffs when you're a man short, the center and the winger have to get out to the points as quickly as possible when you lose the draw. Randy Wood gets tangled up with Murphy, then can't get out. And it's too far for Ridley to come over as he went out to Suter. And those point shots, they often end up in trouble. Hot Van makes the stop and then hustles across to take away the possible goal on the rebound. Bernie Nichols thinking about two great chances already in this game. Puck cleared in by Chelios. 30 seconds gone. And the penalty to Manderville. Murphy back to Suter. There's Nichols. Savar also on the power play is low. Nichols has his shot blocked by Ridley. McCown going after it behind the net, pushes it around the board. Chelios has moved up. And now Nichols is up with it. Watched by Ridley, another penalty coming up. Randy Wood. This is going against Chicago. Wood shot, scores! Short-handed goal by Randy Wood. Just a minute now, I see Doug Gilmore arguing here. I don't know what he's arguing about because the goal should certainly count. The question is, when it's a delayed penalty, Chris, and you shoot the puck and it hits the goalie, does that mean the whistle goes? Because there's no question about the fact that Belfour made the save. And remember, the rule on a delayed penalty is that when the opposition skater gets control of the puck, the whistle goes and the penalty's called, or if the goalie stops it or touches it. Now, there it is right there. The opposition has touched it. He even touches it again to make sure the whistle goes. So I don't think it's a goal, but the delayed penalty's going to be called. The letter of the law is if a skater on the Hawks touch it and control it, the whistle goes. If the goalie just touches it. And, of course, Belfort touched it twice. So this is, I've never seen this call. This, a, this kind of a situation. They haven't posted the goal on the scoreboard, but they are announcing the goal. Now, Belfort gets about one third of the puck. And it, just to make sure it goes in, in a wild attempt to prevent it, he puts it in. Now the question is, does that mean the delayed penalty's called? Because he touched it before it went in. No goal. No goal, but the Hawks get the penalty. That's a tough call, you know, because no way did Balfour control the puck. It wasn't as if he stopped it and put it down and shot it away. But Dvorsky had, has no no recourse but to call this the way he called it. And the rule is designed to protect the team that was going to have the penalty assessed against the other club. And so the Leafs have the call go against them. And it's still 1-0, although here at the United Center, they did announce the Wood goal. Now, the penalty was away in behind the net. 
The leaf net, Murphy runs into McCowan. Now the delayed penalty's on, but the Hawks don't touch the puck till Belfour does. So you can see Murphy serves the penalty with a smile on his face, and the Leafs lose the goal. Yeah, Chicago will take that one. Balfour in that butterfly stance. But the goalie does not have to control it. He just has to touch it when the delay's on. The skaters have to control it. 58 seconds left in Manderville's minor. Then the Leafs will have a short power play. Now, you don't think Eddie Belfort's so smart that <laughs> he turned around and touched with a stick to get the whistle, do you? Never a doubt. <laughs> Well, we know he's a triathlete, and you got to think while you're swimming, skating, and running. Here's Chance putting it in front, and the Leafs come up with the puck there, but Chance goes right back after it. Todd Gill takes him off it. Four on four, and Gilmore with Sundin up front. Here's Gilmore over the line. Sundin on the wing, try to get it back to Gilmore. Now steals it. Todd Gill moves up the drive. Big stop there by Belfour. Rebound, and Sundin. Chopping away at it, now Chicago comes back. Jeff Shantz with Patrick Poulin, and Shantz running into Todd Gill and knocking Gill down. But the puck went loose. You know, when I watch Chicago in these four-on-fours, they play two forwards that makes you think they want to kill the four and four skaters off, when Burns always comes up with two forwards that makes you think he wants to score in this situation. And now with 58 seconds, of man advantage time. The Leafs go to the power play. Manderville's out of the penalty box. And Gartner's up front with Ridley and Hope. Dirk Graham trying to keep the Leafs in their own zone. And the Chicago captain doing a good job against Dave Ellen. Now Ridley in to help his teammate. Finally, it comes loose almost to Brent Sutter. Diddick's moved up, and he gets it to Sutter. So Chicago really not letting the Leafs get started on this shortened power play. You have to move the puck when they harass you in the forecheck. Move it quickly. You've got an extra man and usually an extra two men to get it to when it's that deep in your own end. Under nine and a half minutes to go, second period. Leafs still leading one nothing. Hey. Just 10 seconds left on the man advantage for Toronto. Ridley trying to get it into Gartner. Now Gartner's after it. Here's a shot, Belfour got a pat on that. Off the stick of Benoit Hogue behind the net. Hogue can't control against Diddick. And Joe Murphy's return to the ice. So Chicago back at full strength. Battle for the puck continues, and Gartner from a sharp angle. Steered aside by Belfour, and it's Joe Murphy. Over the line, dropped it off, got it back again. Here's Murphy teeing it up, shot deflected, pop in down. It's loose in the goal crease and swept to the corner. Murphy again, the shot deflected down by Brent Sutter. And they're saying a high stick, and that's the call. Dvorsky will whistle play down. Eight and a half minutes to go, second period. San Jose Sharks building a lead. You feel it, you can take to the bank. We pick it up in the second period. They're ahead three to one. They make it four. Great move by Jamie Baker. Mind you, Sandy McCarthy's playing defense. Tansel and Hodgers draw the assists. And it's a three goal lead for the Sharks at Calgary. Well, that's a stunning score from the Olympic Saddle Dome. Here, a one nothing lead for the visiting team. Leafs with just six road wins on the season. But one of them came here. They were 1-1-1 one, one, and one at the United Center. And Chicago really still trying to make this their new home. Just one game over 500 in their new digs. They won the last home game of the season, or they would have equaled a 1957-58 record of five, under 500, or 500 or under on, at home here, which hardly ever happened in that small little building across the street. Daze centered it. Manderville intercepted Daze again. The shot off the skate of McCowan. Now the Hawks beginning to press. Weinrich spins it in behind, and there is Denny Savar putting it out in front. A chance popped in down. Rebound scores. Patrick Kulak. on the 
one play. Poulin gets one shot. The stop's made. The rebound comes back, and Poulin puts it up to knock their water bottle up, so there's no doubt in the mind of the goal judge. Potvin made a nice stop to, on the first shot, but the rebound came right back to Poulin, and Potvin sitting down couldn't reach it. As it goes into the top of the net, the score's 1-1. The goal by Poulin ends Felix Potvin's playoff shutout streak against Chicago at 152 minutes and 33 seconds. A 1-1 tie now as Poulin scores his first Stanley Cup playoff goal from Denny Savar and Eric Weinrich. Hawks back on even terms. Under seven minutes to go in the second period. Chelios up to Graham. And now Brent Sutter. Offside the call against Chicago. Let's join Scott Russell. Daryl Sittler is one of the great Leafs of all time when it comes to the playoffs. 65 points, no question that Doug Gilmore, he has an assist tonight, will break that soon. Do you see the current Leaf captain rounding into form, Daryl? Well, we're hoping he, uh, well, it's uh, truly to tell it's only been a period. I like the way Matt Sundin's played tonight, and I like the way Felix Potvin has played, and we know we need those three guys going if we're going to win this series. Pat's, uh, Pat Burns asked whether or not this team had grit, honor, and was going to be able to work hard. Do you believe it will? Well, for sure. I like the way we've been playing. We've been finishing our checks. We haven't been doing that all year, and we're playing with some intensity, and uh, yeah, I like our team. Uh, we've added some players at the trade deadline, and I think will help us. Daryl, thanks for coming down guys six and a half minutes to go here in the second period and the Blackhawks back on even terms Denny Savar with his 153rd career Stanley Cup playoff point I think the way the Hawk defenseman pinched the lead wingers have got to keep dumping it by him into the neutral zone hoping that there's not a forward backing up the pinch and get the two on one here's Diddick moving up now for Chicago Looking for Joe Murphy off his stick. Ty Domi lost it. Nichols moved in. Shot block. Nichols again. They score! for Chicago pot bend down as they slap away at it and finally Mike Ridley takes Denny Savar down Savar up with it again it's all Chicago and Savar shot blocked by Gill Leafs on their heels maybe it's something to do with new buildings the Leafs gave up goals in bunches at the Kiel Center this year in two different games it's been a nasty little habit that's surfaced more than once against the Leafs this year. Benoit Hogue shot blocked by Chelios, and that one stung Chelios to the bench. 
Under five minutes to go, second period. And the Blackhawks with a 2-1 lead. Here's Gilmore, down deep for Toronto. He's tripped in a penalty coming up as Doug Gilmore was dumped behind the Chicago goal. The Leafs are down, but headed to the power play. Well, second period gets a tripping penalty and the Leafs are on the power play. And their lone goal tonight with the man advantage. So it's Miranov and Ellett on the points and up front, Gilmore, Sundin, and Andrichuk. 4.34 to go in the second period, 2-1 Chicago. Ellett clears it in, Brent Sutter out to kill the penalty with Dirk Graham. Two great veterans, Andrichuk up with the puck. Andrichuk moving into the slot, check, but there's a shot just whistling wide off the stick of Gilmore. Back into Gilmore behind the net, watched by Steve Smith. Now Sundin, Andrichuk. Andrichuk goes to the front, Gilmore takes over, trying to center it. Now does, Andrichuk banging away at it, then Belfour is down. Well, we know Dave Andrichuk is one of the toughest players to move out of the crease, especially on the power play when the defenseman doesn't really want to get too tangled up in case he has to move. And Anderchuk had about six swings at it as he was being assaulted by more than one hawk, but could not get enough wood on it to put it in. Here he goes in front. He takes it from Smith. Sutter comes in and watches him. Graham's in there taking a look at him, and the four hawk penalty killers were within 10 feet of the net. They could have got the buck out to the point. Point then would have had Lots of time to make a shot or look for a player, but Anderchuk scored a lot of goals on plays like that. Exactly four minutes to go here in the second period. A period that turned around when Randy Wood's apparent shorthanded goal was wiped out, and then the Hawks answered with two straight. Ryan Lewis came in and told us that the reason the goal didn't count was Dvorsky blew the whistle, not the possession that I thought it was. I don't know why Dvorsky would go upstairs to the video goal judge if he blew the whistle. He's the only guy in the building, perhaps, that knew he blew it. I'm not so sure they didn't blow it in a combined effort. I mean the officials. Here's Ellett moving up, but Murphy chops it out. Through center and back down in the leaf zone. Just 34 seconds to go in the man advantage. Nichols and Craven were penalty killing. Now Nichols quickly to the bench. Savard's back out. When Denny Savard's playing the 15 or 16 minutes that Daryl Sutter was hoping he could squeeze out of him tonight. And as the puck went into the leaf bench, our crowd is drawn. 24 seconds left in the power play. Well, Steve Smith's going to get the original penalty, but they're still having words over in front of the Leaf bench. And here's where the penalty is going to be called. Smith, as you can see, has got a reverse hammerlock on Andrichuk and then lets him up. But here's where I thought Smith fell on the puck in the crease, but Balfour came out. As Dvorsky makes the call, only one penalty on it. Lots of nasty language and... Belligerent comments, but only one penalty. Last two whistles, there have been exchanges. Hogan Savard, and then that last whistle, Smith drew a crowd, McCowan, and... Well, the Leafs are playing a much more aggressive physical game tonight than they played most nights this season. And the Hawks have become more aggressive. So this series is gonna look a lot like last year's as far as that's concerned. And all games, or most of them, were one-goal games. The Leafs this year in one-goal games were 12 wins, three losses. The Hawks were six wins, four losses. And the Leafs with Gilmore. Andrew Chuck Sundin back out on the power play. Ellett and Miranov at the points. Graham and Sutter again are killing the penalty with Chris Chelios. And he is paired on this penalty killing duty with Eric Weinrich. The Hawks go right in beyond the, the icing line to forecheck if they think they got a chance to disturb the Leaf defenseman after the shooting. Sundin sends it deep. 
Graham has the puck. Takes a look and off the boards back down the ice. Two oh two to go in the second period and Chicago with the one goal lead and Nichols bothered Miranoff enough to turn back. It's the initial breakout pass that you ought to be able to catch the one four checker on it. The Leafs have had trouble making. Now it's Sundin through center. Chelios blocked it, swept it up, but here's Ellick moving in and the drive just went wide, rings the boards and back down the ice. That angled point shot, you have to hit the net with the puck around the boards and out. And you ice it yourself. Now Gartner at center. He flips it in, and Benoit Hogue will give chase against Chelios. Ridley follows up. Mike Ridley up with it. He's checked by Nichols. Now Weinrich loses it, and the Leafs have possession. Ridley puts it in behind the goal. Gartner after it against Murphy. Chelios taken to the boards by Hogue. Ridley looking for the loose puck, and it's held long enough for a faceoff. Dvorsky is one official in the National League that doesn't allow the puck to sit in the feet of the players up against the end of the rink. If this was Andy Van Helleman refereeing, he'd be calling you to move it, and he won't blow the whistle. I really think Dvorsky's right in this one because not only might a skirmish occur when they start jabbing each other in the feet, and here's what I'm talking about, but an injury could occur. I know the referees are instructed to try and keep the game going. And I know holding the puck against the boards when there's no opposition is a penalty, but I think Dvorsky's got the right idea here. Blow it before there's a problem. He's clearing the snow away from the side of the net that a lot of goalies pile up. And by the last five minutes of the period, when a little dribbler is coming out from behind the net, it can't get through the snow. 65 seconds left in the second period as the puck goes out of play and now 26 seconds remaining in the Leaf power play. Well, Eddie Belfour has been sharp tonight. Lucky on the one that hit him and rolled in and there's the snow I'm talking about. It gets wet. You know the goalies, you see them, they always are pushing the snow out of the crease. And if that gets on the outside of the goal post and on the goal line, you never know, it may stop a trickling puck. Leafs won the draw, but Marinov's shot is blocked, and here's Craven with the breakaway. Without the glove, but in, and he shot it wide. Short-handed chance for Murray Craven. Now Savard steals it. Ten seconds left to the man advantage, and here's Ridley for Toronto. Cross-ice pass, it's offside. Well, that power play was highly unsuccessful by the Leafs. They never did get the puck into the zone and under control very long. Mike Ridley has been a probably the most consistent leap forward, I think, this year. Leads the team in assists. He's the all-time point leader in the playoffs for the Washington Capitals with 60. Craven goes to the point, blocks the Miranoff shot, and then with one glove on, Todd Gill gets enough of him, I think, to take away much of the chance that Marie Craven, who came over from Vancouver after being declared, we're going through a long process of trying to become a free agent for Christian. Here's Di Pietro scores! Swept it underneath Belfour as the penalty had expired. Paul Di Pietro, a playoff hero two years ago in Montreal, gets the Leafs back on even terms. Well, no one will forget the eight goals in 17 games he scored for the Canadians when they won the Cup in 93. And he gets the second goal of this kind tonight against Balfour. This time, Balfour just doesn't get squared around properly. Goes down a little early, and the puck goes between his legs. We saw Sundin do this for the first Leaf goal. Di Pietro doesn't even get out in front of the net. And I'm sure Eddie Balfour would like to have that one back. That was a soft gift to the Leafs. 1926, an unassisted goal for Paul Di Pietro from Sault Ste. Marie. Just five goals during the regular season, but a big goal late in the second period as the Leafs get back to even with Chicago in the final minute as Denny Savard takes a look at the clock. And he doesn't want to give it up in his own zone now, and he'll play the clock down. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs looked like they were getting themselves into trouble with a more aggressive Hawk opponent. But a late goal by Di Pietro puts him back on even terms, and we're going to get into the third with a score tied 2-2.
Patrick Poulin and Monty had scored 88 seconds apart to take the lead, but then the Di Pietro goal. We're tied up. Let's join Ron McLean. At the United Center in Chicago, the Leafs have squared their game with the Blackhawks. Paul DiPietro, the second wraparound goal in this game, unassisted effort for DiPietro, and that makes it 2-2 after two in Chicago. enforcing that touch-up rule. They really wanted to try and protect the players who were going back to get that puck, and there's an example of it right there. Jim Kaiser just on the play, so San Jose looking to add to their 4-1 lead as it shot out to center. Oh, Joel Otto with a burst of speed. Otto couldn't work past Mike Rapti, and a good defensive play took him down. Fans, though, wanted a penalty as Janney brings it in across the line, looks to set up. As we welcome viewers who are Watching the Toronto-Chicago game from the United Center here at the Saddle Dome with two minutes to go in the second period. It's the San Jose Sharks with a 4-1 lead over Calgary, although the Flames have outshot the Sharks 24-14. to San Jose with a minute 20 left on a power play, looking to go up by four. There's not been much question, however, which team has shown a lot more plays. Send it in front of the that they needed. It certainly was. The Flames have been looking for something to get the momentum going their way. Here's the shorthanded feed right out front. The defender gets a little piece of that puck, and that's what allows Flurry to tuck that puck right upstairs. Janney, you see, just touches that puck on the way by, slows it down nicely for Flurry. Flurry obviously with a huge goal for the Flames to get them back in. It's 4-2 now. San Jose leading a second period at the Saddle Dome. 2-2 two -two after two at the United Center in Chicago. After 40 minutes is still to come as we continue with our coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. Monopoly is playoff edition of After 40 Minutes. Brought to you by Bell. victory it was 4-2 Rangers in the third period when Joe Sackick with the help of Netcam cut the deficit to one and that really seemed to turn the Nords around Owen Nolan feathers a sweet pass to Bob Basson at 14.07 they're tied 4-4 and then the thrilling game where Joe Sackick in across the blue line and rips it five hole on Mike Richter his third goal of the game the hat trick the game winner for Sackick sends the crowd into a frenzy and the bench into a state of jubilation Three goals in the third as the Nordiques pull out a thrilling 5-4 win against the New York Rangers. Joining me now from Le Colise is John Garrett. John, that was quite a show. Uh, how about the fallout today, both from a Quebec and a Ranger point of view? It really was quite a game for both teams. I thought that the Quebec Nordiques, the marching band at the start to do the anthems, it took about 20 minutes. The Nordiques were nervous enough, and the Rangers took advantage of that. They played a strong first period, although they were behind. But then in the second period, the Rangers took over. They controlled the boards, and then the Nordique in the third period with, as you say, the help of the net cam goal, got it turned around. What has Mark Crawford said about had the Rangers won that game? I know he's sequestered the team. The pressure must be an immense. Uh, give me a sense of that. Well, there's so many distractions, and with the Winnipeg scene, and now the pressure on Quebec, are they going to be here? Are they not going to be here? And Mark Crawford has to have a press conference every day. In the province of Quebec, the people know what it's like in Montreal. Well, it's the same or worse here in Quebec City. He has to have a bilingual press conference every day. His French isn't that great, but he's trying. And uh, today he was asked, what if? Uh, uh, the if question about the Nordiques two years ago against the Montreal Canadiens. And Mark got angry and said, well, what do you mean? Two years ago against the Montreal Canadiens. It's a different team. It's a different time. It's a different situation. We finished first, and we're playing like a first-place team. Really trying to keep their focus, Mark. Uh, they didn't want to do the interview tonight on Hockey Night in Canada to start uh, getting this national scope uh, too big. But Coley Campbell must be devastated. What changes to the Rangers' plan? 
Well, Brian Noonan got hurt in the first shift last night, tried in the first period, and then was gone. I think Peter Nedved will be out. Coley Campbell was really disappointed in Nedved's play. He changed his locker stall. He put him between Kevin Lowe and Mark Messier to try and let some of that intensity rub off. Well, it didn't. Nedved was a major disappointment. I don't know whether he'll be scratched with Noonan's injury, but I think we'll see, see Stefan Mateau and a more physical New York Ranger team. What was your goalie review of Fissette and uh, Richter? I thought Mike Richter should have had the fifth goal. It was a screenshot, but it was well out. And at that time in the game, you have to come up with a key save. Stefan Fissette did it all night. The score was 1-0. Mark Messier had a breakaway. Fissette came up with the big save. Scores 4-2. Rangers could have put it away with a fifth goal. Messier again, right in front. Fissette dove across and made the key save. And I think that was the difference. Fissette made the big saves, and Richter didn't. John Garrett, you'll see him in action, along with Bob Cole, Dick Irvin, and Scott Russell at Lacalle Zay for Game 2 tomorrow night. Can't wait for that. 7.30 Eastern, coast to coast. Wilson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Brought to you by Bell. Scores on this date in history is only postseason hat trick in a 5 2 win for the Bruins against Montreal in game six of that famous semi. Who'd have a picture of Jonathan in their book? Oh, of course. Stupid. Jamie Baker's got a bid for a hat trick going at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. He's got two. We want to show you the second goal that puts the San Jose Sharks comfortably in front with 15 seconds to go in the second period. Well, technically 17.3. There's Baker's goal from Craig Janney. That's two in the period for Jamie Baker. The San Jose Sharks are giving the Flames fits tonight. It's 5-2 to two there at the end of two periods of play. The United Center, it's all even at two. We'll have more on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC after this. Gilmore and Andrichuk back together, and you play your big guys a lot of the time. Well, and they say that's what they're paid for. The, that's why they're here, and uh, we have to do that. I mean, say these are the guys. Paul Di Pietro gets a big goal, to, but they don't to, to get us back into it. But our big guys have to score. They get, they, the score actually should be 3 2 right now because Randy Wood did score a goal, but that's an official call, and there's nothing you can do about it. What about uh, the atmosphere in the United Center? It seems down a little bit, but the Leafs have been able to take the play to the Hawks a bit. Well, it's, I know it isn't sold out. There's a lot of empty seats around, which is kind of surprising. But uh, uh, I think uh, our first period, we came out with a good game plan. It was commitment to the game plan. The second period, we got away. We got frustrated a little bit, and we would cause a couple of turnovers. And we spoke to Ty about it. We spoke to Manorville about it. We spoke to a lot of guys. Hey, look, we got to stick to the game plan. If we do that, we'll be all right. And that 88-second point in the second period cost the Leafs as they gave up two goals, fell behind by one. But Paul DiPietro with the... Late goal for the Leafs has them tied 2-2 as we're just nicely underway with the third period. Benoit Hogue on left wing with Sundin and Ridley as the Leafs come to center ice and Ridley clearing it in. L4 leaving it for Chelio. Sundin had it hop over his stick and the Hawks skate out to center ice. Here's Sutter dropping it off. Dirk Graham a shot. And Potvin got a piece of that. Jamie McCowan, one of four Leafs with a Stanley Cup ring, can't clear it out. And it's Craven. Here's Murray Craven shot off a skate to the corner. Ridley can't get it out. Chelios rolling it back towards Graham. That was broken up, and the Leafs finally get it out to center, and Sundin sends it into the Chicago zone as both teams make changes. Icing the call against Toronto. Oh, well, we mentioned the two quick goals, Poulin and Amante together for Chicago, and then Di Pietro putting one underneath Belfort. Leafs with a, an edge in shots on goal, 25-14. Well, Pat Burns was saying that his stars, the highest paid players, the most, play the most, and that's exactly what's happening on the front both benches. And Mel Gibson's in the building tonight. It's not sold out tonight, but lethal weapon is well represented here. I like his movie Brave Hearts. There's a lot of brave hearts he's <laughs> watching, I'll tell you right here. Mel Gibson. Here's Jamie McCowan over center, clearing it in wide of the goal, and that was played awkwardly by Belfour. Maybe not played at all. It's in front. They score! Mike Gardner on a feed from Andrew Chuck, and the Leafs have gone ahead 3-2. Well, you're right, uh, Balfour kind of fumbled what I think was a shoot-in by Jamie McCowan. The puck came off the Coke sign, and Balfour lets it go through his legs, and then Bernie Nichols just dumps it into the corner. 
and Anerchuk beats Smith, and nobody takes Gardner. So here was a hat trick of mistakes. There's the first one. Here's the second one by Bernie Nichols. The third one, nobody gets to him. That was four mistakes on it. When you make four mistakes in your own zone, it usually ends up in the net. 125, the time of the goal. Mike Gartner celebrating his 100th Stanley Cup playoff game with the goal from Andrew Chuck and the Leafs with a 3-2 lead. Gartner just five Stanley Cup playoff goals last year, but three were game winners, and he'd dearly love to see that one stand up, but it's early third period. Leafs leading 3-2. Ellett trying to clear it up the boards. Stopped by Savar. Back to Didick and Denny Savar, who had three shots on goal in that period, spins it around the boards. Daze behind the net against Ellett. Big Eric Daze trying to center it. Didick pinching up again. And now Wood after the puck, kept in by Savar. Here's Daze. Takes a look. Patrick Poulin, one of the Chicago goals, lost possession, and the Leafs just get rid of it down the ice. Didick will go back to play it, and icing the call against Toronto. Well, I came to the rink early with uh, Mr. Wamsley and Brian Papineau, the, one of the Leafs conscientious trainers, was sharpening the skates. About one half the Leafs on a game day like to get their skates sharpened by Brian before the morning skate and not after. The other half don't want them sharpened before the morning skate. They want them sharpened after the morning skate so they're sharp for the game. Papano's got a list of the guys who want it done early and a list of the guys that want it done late. What you're saying is Brian Papano has to be sharp all day. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is the Leafs are, have a real fine group of trainers and equipment guys. And if you want to have a team that's together, you've got to have those kind of people working. They work long hours, they're not really well paid for it. They're as dedicated to their job as the players are to theirs. Steve Smith for Chicago. Skating it out to center ice. Cravens up front. And here's Smith trying to break through. And the Leaf defense won't allow it. And Ty Domi starts back. Cut off by Brent Sutter. Just over three minutes into the third period. Leafs with a 3-2 lead on the go-ahead goal by Gartner. And there's a shot off the stick of Dirk Graham deflecting into the crowd. And Kriva Krasov shake it up. We'll be right back. Well, lots of hockey today. Six games in the 95 playoff. A surprise right there, New Jersey in overtime, Philadelphia. And uh, St. Louis in a hard fought battle over Vancouver. And Kidd has been pulled in that game, and Tavaracci has gone in for the third period. That one will raise some eyebrows. So Four close games and uh, two surprises. I think the surprise in Boston was that New Jersey won so handily at the Garden. There's a shot in on Potvin. And now Rich Sutter, up right wing for Toronto, flipping it in and immediately heading for the bench. As Pat Burns, matching line since Andrew Chuck Gartner and Gilmore back out. Butcher dumping it in and Cam Russell back to get it. Gartner for checking Russell dangerously in front. And now it's sent ahead by the Hawks, broken up by McCowan, who took a hit from Amante, and Murphy has to wait till Amante gets onside, sending it into the leaf zone. McCowan watched by Nichols. And the Leafs get it back out to center. Suter and Chelios on the ice again. Pass cut off by Gilmore. Andrzejczyk, if he plays it, is offside, and they now whistle it down. Well, Suter and Chelios, who pass that puck back and forth to each other on many occasions, did it three times in the first period, and only three here. And here's what the Leafs are doing. One four-checker goes to the other, and watch how quickly Chelios is confronted by Andrzejczyk. And Gartner stays with Suter to make sure there's no return pass. And the puck ends up behind the Chicago net. And the Leafs are making it tough for the two fine Chicago defensemen. 
Here's Suter and Chelios passing, and they lose the puck. Ridley coming in. Nice pass at Belfour's brawling, and Suter to clear away the rebound. Great chance there by Benoit Ho. Suter feeds it ahead this time to Craven. Now rink wide it goes, and Dirk Graham after it, trying to set up Chelios, and Ellett breaks it up and sends away. Ridley ahead to Sundin, loose again, snaps the shot right on. Ridley behind the net, broken up by Brent Sutter, and Chelios will take over. Ahead to Suter, out to center ice. Gary Suter trying to burst through, hook back on the play, and Miranov around the boards. Secret to a good hook, Chris, is to hook him and impede his progress, but don't knock him down. And that's exactly what Miranov did to Suter. Yeah, got a little attention from the crowd. Here's Graham walking in, now back to Suter, loads it up, nice block by Ho. Suter with it again, moving in. Gary Suter right in, and Pot Van down. Sundin starts back, it's one-on-one, -on -one, Sundin against Chelios. Everybody else back around the center line, and now here's a chance for Bill Berg, and Belfour sprawling as the shot went wide. Sundin waited and waited there until the line change was made and Berg caught up with the play. Five minutes, 45 seconds gone, third period, icing the call against Chicago. It's 3-2 for the Leafs, the go-ahead goal by Mike Gartner. Zone coverage by the three Leafs in deep, the two defensemen in the center, but Benoit Hogue had fallen, and that allows the defenseman Suter to walk right into the crease and can't get it by Potvin. Gartner, Gilmore, Andrew check back out. Puck comes out to center ice, Leafs clearing it back in. Daze, Poulin, and Savard for Chicago. Eric Daze gives it up, and Andrichuk backhands it deep. Gartner giving chase. On the near side, Steve Smith. Over to defensive partner Didick. Andrichuk four checking. They get it ahead, and Patrick Poulin, who has a goal, moves down left wing now into the center. Savar is breaking on the play. A backhand towards the net off the blocker of Potvin. Steve Smith moves up. Denny Savar behind the net, looking to center it. It's out in front. Pula with one shot doesn't get through. Savar again. And he has caused havoc. Does they in front backhand? And Potvin got a piece of it, and Jennings blasts it off the boards, and it ends up in the Chicago bench. Well, anybody who was worried about Felix Potvin's confidence level after having a little bit of a difficult time at the end of the season has to really be impressed by the way he's played tonight. He took a goal away from rookie Eric Daze, who had 40, 54 of them for Beauport in the Quebec Major Junior League, and Botfan takes it with his right arm as the Leafs got in trouble in the defensive zone coverage. Savard, who used to hang out behind the net and make all those great passes, got the puck out to his young line mate, but Botfan prevented the goal. Well, only Stan Makita and Bobby Hull have more playoff goals and playoff points than number 18. He owns a lot of hockey records. He's breathing on more if he can play very much longer. We thought he capped a great career with the Stanley Cup two years ago in Montreal, but boy, he looks as good as he's looked in maybe five years back in Chicago. Here's a loose puck in the zone. Land behind the goal. Gets it back to Chelios. Here's the shot. Change direction ends up in the corner. Leafs hanging on a bit now. Weinrich shot. That doesn't get through. Benoit Hogue rolls it ahead. And now the Leafs have a break. Here's McCowan with Sundin. Matt Sundin fires. Rebound swept away. Butcher moves up. The shot glove. And Eddie Belfour hangs on with Mike Ridley on the doorstep. Close call there. Belfour tested in the Chicago zone. With the Hawks, but not travel with him and can't play till next year. He's fighting a battle against two enormous opponents. And anyone who knows Bob hopes that he wins it. Everything's been positive so far here in Chicago. And we may see him back in action next year. 
Here's Bill Berg with a shot on the short side. Manderville got a piece of that. Berg going for the net. Stick lifted, and Amante will start back with Murphy. Joe Murphy down the right side against Dave Ellett with 12-12 to go in the third period in the Leafs with a one-goal lead on Mike Gartner's goal at 125 of the third period. This is the big assignment for the Leafs wingers. Chip it by the pinching defenseman because they're going to be coming. And you'll get that odd man rush and you may be able to put him away with a goal. Here comes Nichols into the slot, drops it off. Chelios fake the shot against Berg. Now centers Murphy high and wide. Amante along the four, far boards and he flipped it over the glass and out of play as the Hawks get a great chance there. Well, the Hawks certainly are not going to sit for the next 11 and a half minutes on a one goal deficit. They're going to gamble. And the Leafs' patience and experience at protecting the lead, which in the last two playoffs, they have been great at it. And this is a true test for a team not to get too much on the defensive and be ready to take advantage of some poor offensive decisions by a desperate team. Pat Burns has to be pleased with the way the Leafs have played most of the time tonight. They remind me in this first two and a half periods a lot of the way they played a lot of periods last week. Leaf fans are saying, where was that team for a lot of the regular season? But it's a different lineup. Nine different players on the Toronto bench tonight that were not in action for the Leafs against Chicago last year in the playoffs. Earth Butcher up the boards, and it did come out. Cleared back in by Didick offside. Well, the referee was sitting right outside the blue line and made the call. Well, 3-2 is the score here. There has been a scoring change in Calgary. Let's join Ron McLean. The assist 5-3 is now the score there. Let's get you back to the United Center. Scott Russells with the bomber. Right, Ron, Ken Baumgartner here, and Ken, the story was that the Leafs had to hit the Hawks. Do you like what you see? Well, we have kept up with them hit, uh, hit to hit. That's what we wanted, and that's what I've seen, and 10 minutes left, uh, you have to be happy with one goal lead in here. You talked about the fact that that might not pay off till later in the series. Yeah, a player like Chalios uh, plays 30 minutes a game. If you hit him night in, night out, uh, game five or six, he'll start to feel it. Quickly, what's it like to sit on the sidelines, a competitor like you? Well, it, it's getting tougher and tougher, but I'm getting closer to coming back, which is the good news. Bomber will be nice to see you back. Guys, back to you. Thanks. Well, Chris, I want to congratulate the War Road Lakers, War Road, Minnesota, right on the Canadian border. They, last month, won their second consecutive Allen Cup, one of the oldest trophies in Canada. Cal Marvin, the general manager, put that team together, and they beat Stony Plain, Alberta to win the Allen Cup again. Now, is War Road where the Christian brothers Yes, the from? Christian brothers from War Road, absolutely. And they, of course, are famous not only for their hockey careers, but their hockey stick factory. That's right. Dave Christian was a Chicago Blackhawk last year in the playoff series. And if, for those people who can remember the 1960 Olympics, the Christian brothers led the American team to a gold medal. And squab out. Here there's ten and a half minutes left, third period. Daze with a shot on goal. Big strapping rookie, six foot four, over 200 pounds. The Hawks think they've got a real prize in number 55, and he's after it again. Daze bumped down by Ellett that time. Fourth round pick, Garrick Daze. 90th overall, boy, when they turn out, that is a pleasant bonus. And you know who he sits beside in the dressing room? Denny Savard. So trying to get him to soak up that experience. Here's Di Pietro, who got the Leafs back in it late in the second period with that goal. Randy Wood behind the net. And Weinrich all over him. Bill Berg with it. Just flips it in behind the goal. Todd Gills him a little deep, but wants to get back to his defensive post. And now Daze, checked by McCowan. Gets it again. Off the stick of Weinrich, and Todd Gill has it. Chicago making a change, and 
Gill just flips it into the zone so the Leafs can do likewise. Under playing a very conservative game here, not forechecking in the third period with two men. Always want to be at least even numbered on rushes through the neutral zone. Here's Murray Craven circling. Trying to set it up, and it hits Sundin. Now a race for it. Sundin against Craven. Sundin is in. Scores! Matt Sundin! Back checker. The Leafs get away with a hook on the one back checker. Dvorsky's really hearing it from the Chicago bench for not calling it, and that allows Sundin to get the breakaway. And they have a point, complaining as they are. Dirk Graham over to Dvorsky to ask about it. Let's have a look at it now. It was a play that Murray Craven lost the puck after he was circling all the wagons here in Chicago. Now watch what happens. Craven gets hooked off his feet by Todd Gill, I believe. And that gave Sundin the time and the space to make that nice play to make it 4-2. So someone once said that the breaks will even themselves out. And tonight, tonight, maybe with that goal that was not given to the Leafs that I think should have been, a break like that means the old philosopher who thought that comment up was not lying, although uh, most of the time you don't get it the same game. Here's another chance for the Leafs. Andrichuk pushing it ahead, scores! Andrichuk was able to one-hand that over Belfour. Well, Pat Burns was saying his big guns, his big offensive guns have to come through. Sundin has two, Andrichuk has one, and the Leafs have a stranglehold on game one here in Chicago. Anderchuk, not known for his speed, hangs in there long enough to get the puck on the stick. Eddie Balfour gambled and came out. If he'd have stayed in, you wonder whether Anderchuk would have been able to get his other hand on the stick. It's easy to sit up here and second guess goaltender. The goals come 14 seconds apart, and the goal by number 14 makes it 5-2 to Toronto. It looks like Jeff Hackett is going to come in. I can't understand this one. Chris, I don't think you should take your goalie out when you can't win the game. I mean, it's 5-2 with eight minutes to go. This wasn't a great play, as you can see, a great decision, or a great physical play by Didik, who dove, and especially by... Belfour. But Belfour's going to play the next game, and maybe the thinking on the Chicago bench is we don't want to expose Belfour to what his teammates are doing to him, allowing these breakaways, because we want him in the best mental shape we can have him in in game two. That must be what they're thinking, because it certainly hasn't been Belfour's fault, although we've seen him sharper. He hasn't had much support in this period. First, Sundin, then Andrew Chuck. The goal's coming at 10.50 and 11.04. 5-2 Toronto in game one of this Western Conference quarterfinal. Leafs scored five last year in the opening game. There's a long shot first handled by Hackett, and he'll hold on for a faceoff. And the fans give the Hawks a little cheer for that save. We'll be right back to the United Center. Gill. And that gave Sundin a chance to spin his magic and score. And here's the second goal. Not a great move by Balfour. Anderchuk would never have got up to the puck to get much on a shot. Balfour gambled and lost. Well, just to confirm for the Pooleys, both the Leaf goals in 14 seconds unassisted. And the Leafs with three straight here in the third. And remember, it was Chicago up two to one. Late in the second period. Eight minutes to go. Third period here at the United Center. Chance for Daze. Can't get the shot away. Now centers it. Mike Ridley is there. Daze and Ridley to the boards. Comes back to Gary Suter. Suter takes the wrist shot with Daze screening. And Potman took it high. I can tell you this, Chris. Denny Savard looks tired to me. And if they think they're going to get this much ice time out of him in this kind of a series, if it goes any length, you're going to be in trouble. But this guy, Savard, was paid one of the biggest compliments I've ever seen teammates pay a guy when the Montreal Canadiens in 1993 won the Stanley Cup. Savard was not in the lineup for many of the games in the finals, including the last one. But when they presented the cup, the first person 
that the players on the ice found was Savard and hoisted them up on his shoulders to tell him in no uncertain terms but the biggest compliment you could ever be paid by your teammates, they appreciated his contribution to that Stanley Cup win even though he didn't play in the last game. And I have not seen that kind of a display before. It was a great tribute and I'm sure Savard cherishes that memory as much as I enjoy telling you about it. Holly's 12th all-time scorer in playoffs. And he has an assist tonight, but his team is down 5-2 here in the third period as Dirk Graham goes wide. Back it comes, Gerald Diddick moving up, but lost it to Andrzejczyk. Leafs break out, two on one. Mike Gartner moving into the zone with Andrzejczyk. The return pass broken up by Steve Smith. And the Hawks turn now. Brent Sutter to the line. His shot hit McCowan, and that hurt. Gilmore behind the net. McCowan there, Graham, and Sutter for the Blackhawks. Bill Berg jostling with Sutter as it hopped over the stick of Murray Craven back out to center, and Cam Russell gets it. Ahead to Craven as the Hawks make a change. Long shot in, and Potman plays it up. The crest and hangs on. Well, this game that we thought was going to be a close one has turned into a bit of a blowout of the Hawks are being burned. And as you look at uh, along the Chicago bench, I think of the comment once made, each snowflake in an avalanche pleads not guilty. <laughs> and I think that's what many of these players are thinking right now. They, they pack it playing in his first playoff game ever, had this record for the Hawks this season. But Sutter, Daryl Sutter was talking about the importance of game one. There's a chance, a chance, score! Jeff Chance on the rebound, and it's not over yet. 6.32 to go, Chance makes it 5-3. Felix Potman made the save on the initial shot, but the rebound went to Chance, who with not much of an angle, the Regina Cap grad put it in, and here's, you can see, he's backing up and he's about two feet outside the icing line. So there wasn't much net to see, but he put it in right here. Nice patience. Pot fans out of it after making the first save. And Jennings can't get a hold of Chance to prevent the shot. And Jeff Chance gets his first goal in 20 games. And his first goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Cam Russell gets an assist, and it's a two-goal Leaf lead. As play is whistled down, and a bit of a bonus for Daryl Sutter. He'll take goals from anybody, but the fourth line chipping in is a real bonus. And Chance has words for the Leaf bench. Now this series, the animosity is uh, growing as this series is progressing. and. You haven't seen much of Ty Domi since he's made that giveaway that Pat Burns referred to, and we talked to him at the end of the second period. That gave the Hawks the lead. Looked like Rich Sutter, an old teammate, was answering Chance back. Well, the Hawks looking for another quick one. Saw a great comeback last night by the Quebec Nordiques against the Rangers. Marinoff, Berg swiped at it. Chelios kept it in. Boulan behind the net. Daze parked in front. Gilmore intercepted the pass and gets it out to center ice. Exactly six minutes to go. Here in the third period at the United Center. 5-3 Leafs as Ellett is hounded. Daze after it. Denny Savard there too. Back to the point. Chelios sends it deep. Daze can't control it. Savard after it. Miranov for Toronto. Puck still against the boards, and now Chelios. Wood was hanging on, and Savar goes after Ellett on the far boards. And Ellett wants a whistle, and he better be careful. Dvorsky surveying, and finally blows play dead. Now the, Leaf, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks have both defensemen pinching right down to the icing line. You saw Chelios there as uh, Dave Ellett wisely got a whistle. The Leaf defenseman had been on for quite a while and his legs were burning up, I'm sure. Seems to play.
play the whole game. He's got great stamina. And I'm sure we'll get lots of Norris Trophy votes this season. Whether he'll get enough or not, I don't know. He's always a candidate, it seems. Consensus was he was the best defenseman in the first half of the year, and then Paul Coffey and Ray Bork really came on as well. But another great season for the two-time Norris Trophy winner. With no interconference games, I really think the NHL, and they might have thought about it, should present full winners this year because these guys haven't even played against each other. It's hard to measure Coffee versus uh, Bork when they never played each other, and many of the voters never saw one of the two play much. 4.44 to go in the third period. Here come the Hawks, down by two. Nichols send it in deep. Butcher takes a hit from Amani, but gets it around the board. Sundin out to center. Graham intercepts for Chicago. Bernie Nichols feeds it ahead. And now it's Graham on the move. The Hawk captain. Up by Butcher. Gilmore there as well. Gilmore around the boards. Hogue will go after it. Hits Diddick. Dirk Graham has it. Looking to center. And Hogue knocked his man down. They look for a penalty as Potman goes down. Penalty coming up. Potman down. And finally play whistled. And a penalty will be called against the Leafs. And Dvorsky wanting to make sure none of the Leaf defensemen were there to trap the puck in the goal crease. Sound goalie, and here's an acrobatic display by Felix Potten to make the save on what looked like an easy wraparound. Daryl Sutter in dark sport coat and Burns in his new mustard-colored coat. And the Hawks on the power play. 0 for 2 in the game. Chelios the drive, and Bill Berg clears the rebound up into the crowd. On the two leading shots on goal leaders for the Hawks, Chelios one, Suter two. They get many of them on the power play. It's awful tough and a little dangerous to play out too far on the point man if you are the penalty killing forwards. Because then you're given the three on two down deep. Hawks win the draw, Chelios. Now Poulin. Cross ice pass, missed Bernie Nichols. Patrick Poulin, who has one of the Chicago goals. And now Denny Savarian, he's turned around by Ellett, who keeps the Hawks in the corner. Now it's Poulin, looking for Denny Savar, comes back to Gary Suter. There's the shot, Bill Berg got a piece of that, and gets it past Suter down the ice. One ten to go in the penalty, 3.15 to go in the third period, 5-3 Toronto. And Randy Wood intercepts a pass off the glass, kept in by Chelios. Bernie Nichols has Savar open on this near side, shot right on. McCowan up the boards, Chelios will keep it in. Puck went over the stick of Denny Savar. Gill hands it away, and the Leafs on their heels right now. 45 seconds left in the man advantage. Wood watching Chelios. Ridley on Suter. Back it comes to Suter. Return to Chelios. And the crowd urging them to shoot. Here's Suter. Down low, Nichols. Poulet a shot right on, and the rebound cleared by McCowan. Poulin never got a lot on that. He was in a nice spot to score from, 15 or 20 feet out right in the middle with nobody around them, but he only got half the puck on the shot. Gilmore killing some time, and Butcher sending Chicago back. That should do it for the power play. As Mike Gartner returns to the ice. Craven to the line, kicks it up, and exactly two minutes to go here in the third period. And scampering back quickly was Weinrich with Gilmore cruising at center ice. Leafs at full strength, protecting a two-goal lead. Andrzejczyk in front of the Leaf pitch, bumped by Gerald Diddick, but he's a tough guy to move off the puck. Butcher up ahead on the right side, and Gartner took the pass offside. 1.35 to play. Well, Pat Burns has 
Maple Leafs a minute and 35 seconds from winning the first game of this best of seven. The next game will be glad to bring to you Tuesday night from the same United Center. It's not over, but it's getting close. Burns' team stuck to the game plan and were rewarded with a what looks like is going to be a victory. And when you get 20 guys trying to play the same way, and it's a good plan, you've got a good chance of winning. People were asking Pat Burns about what the best way to hit the playoffs was. And Chicago, of course, was the hottest team going into the playoffs with an unbeaten streak in the last six. But it really doesn't matter once the postseason begins. And the Leafs are now 90 seconds away from an opening night win here in the 95 Stanley Cup playoffs on the road where they've had such trouble winning this season. Dave Ellett knocked that one down with a high stick. He's not in agreement with Paul Dvorsky. And play whistled down. There'll be a faceoff in the Leaf zone. Now, will Jeff Hackett be summoned to the Chicago bench? I would think he would be. There's no use leaving him in there. There's no goals against championship offered in the playoffs. A minute and 17. They have to score twice. They've got the faceoff in the Leaf zone. This is. Eddie Balfour, who was on quite a roll going into the playoffs, and I'm sure isn't really happy with his game tonight. Although it, as most in most cases, it, it's a team win or a team loss. Well, he credited the team when the Jennings was clinched on the final night of the season, and I don't think Daryl Sutter will. Center out his goaltender after this one's over if the score should stay. One minute to go. And the puck being frozen by McCowan behind the net. Well, the Leafs have uh, weathered two or three little six or eight minute storm. And I think you have to give Pot Fan credit we're making some pretty good saves and playing the kind of hockey that we saw him play the last two years and the playoffs in 92 and 90, uh, 93 and 94. But the last game he played during the season, he didn't look as sharp as he looks tonight. Nichols breaks his stick on that faceoff and it allows the Leafs to roll it out to center and down into the Chicago zone. And the Blackhawks with six attackers and hack it out of the net. Here's Gary Suter leading the Hawks into the zone. There's a shot handled by Potvin. McCown cleared it around the boards, and Mike Ridley sends it down the ice. Two-goal lead. They won't likely worry about the icing call, which is coming against Toronto. Well, they certainly don't worry as much about it. And uh, Ridley, who's a bright player, made no attempt to see if he could gain any more footage to get to the red line. It gives Elise a chance to change the line. If Pat Burns wants to, there's 29.9 seconds to go. 5-3 Toronto. Both teams will work out here at the United Center tomorrow. And then get on to game three on Tuesday. We'll be here to bring it to you. The first of a million nights in a row. Hockey Night Canada will be sharing your living room. Under a half minute to go now. Here's Chelios moving up along the boards. And Berg's got a real hold on him. Hawks trying to chop it free. Creeper Krasov out there. He gets it over in front. There's a shot right on. Shantz with a point blank shot. And Potvin kept it out with 10 seconds to play. Well, you know, the, the new style that we are seeing creeping into the repertoire of a lot of NHL goalies is the paddle down, the flat of the shaft of the stick down. And here's why some goalies like it in a crowd. And Potvin makes the save right there. You can see he's got the paddle that protects anything along the ice. And often he, the goalies don't see the puck when there's that many people around. And the goalie's saying, if you get it up in the air, into the top of the net with no time and somebody on you, I'll give you the goal. If you just slap it at the net the way you often do in that circumstance, you're probably going to hit me with it. Clock running down. And 
and an offside called with point two seconds to go. Well, I'm sure the Hawks are players who played here last year against the Leafs in the first round are being reminded that this Leaf team, although has many new faces, are playing quite similarly to last year's playoff team. And so the Leafs win the first one and go up one nothing in this series. They didn't play very well in the second period, but in the first and third, they were the better team. The big guns scored in the third. Gartner, Sundin, and Andrzejczyk. Leafs win it 5-3. Now to the broadcast center at Ron McLean. Thanks, Chris and Harry, very much. The Leafs join the Devils and the Capitals as teams winning and resting away home ice advantage. Now the San Jose Sharks are trying to do it against the Calgary Flames. They're in the third period there. Here's Ken Daniels and Brian Hayward. 5-3, the Sharks leading Calgary with just 1.15 to play in regulation time. Ken Daniels along with Brian Hayward and Tom Harrington as we welcome the viewers who have been seeing the Leafs and Hawks at the United Center. The attendance tonight just 15,624, a sellout here at the Saddle Dome, 20,230. This is the lowest attendance of the season for the Calgary Flames. Well, maybe the fans had some kind of inkling that the Flames were going to perform the way that they did in this first game because it certainly wasn't the best effort put out there on the ice. San Jose Sharks have got all the breaks in this hockey game, and they've made it a very frustrating affair for Calgary. They just continue to back up into the defensive zone and protect that two-goal lead, and Calgary has been unable to really generate much offense here in the third period. This Saddle Dome will undergo extensive renovations during the offseason. They have 140 days to complete everything. They're going to do much what the Edmonton Coliseum did. The longer the Flames can go in the playoffs, less time for Renos, and I think Calgary fans would be happy for that should it happen. No question about that. Rick Tabaracci already made his way over to the Calgary bench. So the Flames have the sixth attacker out onto the ice. You saw Wayne Thomas at the Shark bench providing instructions. He's the assistant coach for San Jose that is in control of the defensive core. Rick Tabaracci started the third period, replacing Trevor Kidd in the Calgary goal. Right off the drive, goes to Sanis Ozovic. Gets it out to center for Janney. Janney with that open net. Carries in across the line, but Housley playing goaltender got a piece of it. As we approach the final minute in regulation time. That center is Theron Fleury. Fleury in across the line. Being pumped by Rapchi. And the size mismatch. Titot couldn't come up with the puck. Housley jumps to it along the near boards. Gets it to Garman Titot. Walls in the corner with him. Got it to Walls. Back in the net. Reichel there, chase on up on the play to Flurry. Flurry behind the net, centered in front. Housley at the point, shooting, and Irve saw it all the way. No flame in front of him, and Irve able to hang on. Credit that shark defense for clearing the lane for Archer's Irve. Housley gets a little snapshot through, but he's able to, goalkeeper's able to pick it up all the way. Sharks have got their big defensemen out there, Rathji and Ozilinch, and they did a terrific job boxing out in front, allowing Irve a clear look at the puck. Huge win for the San Jose Sharks. They've only got 34 seconds left to kill. But we mentioned that in Detroit last year, they took the first game of the playoffs against the Maple Leafs. They won game one, so this is a pattern that the San Jose becoming used to, and I, I don't really think it's necessarily Calgary underestimating the San Jose Sharks by any means. Well, Calgary looked very nervous going into this hockey game, and much has been made in the local media, of course, about the Flames' lack of success in the first games of the playoff, and their inability to win a playoff series since they won the Cup back in 89. And of course, we've managed to harp on it several times in tonight's telecast. Question is, what does this guy do? What does he say when he gets back into that locker room? How does he tell his guys to relax? Because they just mishandled the puck at critical times and it cost them. Doug Riseboro, you have to wonder what he's thinking too. He's seen this all too many times before and he's seen it from back of the bench too before going upstairs to general manager duties. Having a conversation right now with the strength and conditioning coach George Kinnear up in the press box. I'm wondering if they're discussing Joe Neuendijk's status. Yeah, and we don't know if he's going to be able to go on Tuesday night. Neuendijk returning from Los Angeles where Dr. Robert Watkins checked him out. And it is a day-to-day -day thing. And Dr. you were checked out by for back problems, uh, Brian, in your career. Bob Watkins is the guy that handles all of the athletes. Not that I would call myself an athlete. Oh, sure. Course, he's but, uh, your goaltender, big I athlete. Just, Absolutely. I just did. Off the draw, 
Reichel couldn't get the shot. Chase on does deflect it through, and Herbe down, and he's able to hang on again. But even on the deflection, Herbe able to see the shot. Here are the wow, game though. one playoff woes for the Calgary Flames. See how they've done in the past five years. Of course, a very positive note for the Flames is that they've won the second game in all of those series. So if the trend continues, at least King will be satisfied with that one. Second game goes here Tuesday night. Sat at all before moving on to San Jose. 5-3, the Sharks leading. Get it to the line, but not out. 22 seconds left. Housley able to hold it in. Reichel to chase on. Chase on, good shooting position, got it through. Herbie made the save and the whistle goes as Miller was ready to clear it out. So I think even with the quick whistle from referee Dan Marowelli, the Flames will get a bit of a break because the faceoff will remain in the San Jose zone where I think Miller would have been able to clear it. Again, though, I think that Jimmy Kaidu had himself a terrific hockey game along with Jason Moore did an outstanding job because Herbie is allowed to move right out in front of the goal crease to stop the initial shot. And then the battle, of course, ensues for control of the rebound, and the Sharks seem to be winning most of the battles in this hockey game. The outstanding Sharks tonight, certainly. Jamie Baker, and Alf Dahlen out front. We talked about Jimmy Kite. Arthur Zerbe has made the big saves when he's had to. The Flames have outshot San Jose 38-25. to 13.8 seconds left in regulation time. Baron Fleury. Wins the draw to Reichel. To Housley. Back of the net. Flurry ties up his man. Titov trying to jam it in. They score! Titov from the side of the net with 5.8 seconds left. For those fans that remain, get up on their feet. German Titov with a nice little move. The wraparound on the backhand side. Great work being done in front of the goal by Joel Otto. That gives Titov the space to come out and jam it in the short side. Here it is from the other angle. Look at the work by Otto on Rathji that will not allow Mike Rathji to get to Titov. He takes advantage of the space and stuffs it in. Flames have got 5.8 seconds left to work with. I don't know, Ken. It's been done before. <laughs> But if nothing else, maybe it's a confidence booster and the Flames go back to their dressing room and say, we scored four times. Uh, some of the goals that San Jose did manage to get tonight, they got some pretty good bounces. Uh, one from Dolan, certainly. Jamie Baker was a beautiful move, but San Jose did get the breaks early on in this hockey game when they scored three in the first period, much like they did against last year when they took game one at Joe Louis Arena. They scored three against the Red Wings in the first. No question that the breaks went their way. Arthur Zerbe had a number of goal posts that saved him a few on a few different occasions and another one of their goals their first Rath J power play marker went in off a deflection off of Ronnie Stern's shin pad so sure the breaks have gone San Jose but good teams make breaks go their own way or they can overcome the bad breaks. T-top scoring play from Housley and Reichel at 19.54. Flames need Bill Mosienko out on the ice right now. Reichel jumping too quickly. Right off the draw, the Flames do what they want to do, shooting it in. Picks it all through the crease. A terrific opportunity. We said it's been done before, and the Calgary Flames came that close to tying up this hockey game. But it's the San Jose Sharks who win game one. Five to four, Herbe thanking his lucky stars. We talked about the adventures of Archer's Herbe once he starts wandering outside that goal crease. The Flames come within an inch of tying up this hockey game. Incredible that they even get an opportunity at the goal. Herbe can count his lucky stars. So the final score here at the Saddle Dome, much like previous years, much to the chagrin of the Calgary Flames fans who file out. The Flames drop the opener. The final, final score, the Sharks five, the Flames four will return to the broadcast center after this timeout. It's two games at Chicago and Calgary. Matt Sundin, Dave Anderchuk, and Denny Savard, the stars at the United Center and at the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary. Although, based on that last five seconds, I'm not sure about the third star selection. Jamie Baker with a pair to face the Sharks' victory. Alf Dahlin and Archer Zerbe. Although he was terrific, he uh, faced 40 shots, but he looked funny to me. Archer Zerbe is a 
ugliest looking goaltender yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's a party astrum. The only problem is that he stops bucks. Yeah, you know, they had to fix his pads, by the way. They were oh, too yeah? wide. They uh, taped them up before the well, game. He's a what funny looking guy, as long as you stop, and that's what they say. What'd you think of uh, the Calgary game? Started too late. I'm, uh, I, I feel so sorry for these first place clubs. You know, they work hard all year, and I know it's the rules. You're not going to say they worked hard all year, and what happens is all even right now. I still say the, the teams that finish way down like that should only get two games at home. I really believe Harry Sinden said that a long time ago, and I believe it. To echo your point, Good. it's four and four right now with home ice advantage. Uh, four road victories uh, uh, in the opening game. And you go back to last year, the teams yeah. with home ice going in won five of eight series. The year before that, the teams with home ice advantage entering the playoffs won only two of eight first round you, series. You, you steal the first one, you're home free. Just go in, that's all he want. Steal the first one, that's all. I'll get a thought in Chicago, Toronto in a moment. Before we get to that, let's uh, head to the United Center. Matt Sundin was the number one star for the Maple Leafs this evening, and he's standing by with Scott Russell. Matt Sundin, two goals and a 5-3 Leaf win, and they take the series lead. Pat Burns challenged you. He played you a lot tonight. How did you respond to that? Well, it's, uh, it was fun. It's a uh, playoff game is a little more intensity, and uh, I love to be out there, so uh, I enjoyed it. It was fun. What about the atmosphere in the United Center? It seems that the Hawks haven't played that well at home. It was a quiet building tonight for the most part. Well, I think uh, we uh, played a strong first period, and uh, they came back in the second, and uh, the crowd got going a little bit. But uh, it's a little different from the, the other rank there. It's uh, probably a little more easier for the, for the crowd to get, get into the games in, in the smaller old building. Matt's the Leafs didn't finish the season particularly strongly. Pat challenged the team by saying it will take grit, it will take hard work, and some honor to win in the playoffs. Uh, how do you believe the team as a whole has responded to that? Well, it's very early. It's uh, one game in. Uh, we won the first one. It's a good start for us, uh, but uh, we haven't done anything yet. If you, if you look at uh, the playoffs, uh, it's just a start. We, we, we started off as we wanted, and uh, it's, it's a long way to go, and it's a lot of work ahead of us. Matt's uh, one of the things and one of the keys that a lot of people have talked about is that we'll have to be a physical series for Toronto to defeat the Hawks. You'll have to wear them down. Did you start that tonight? Well, I, th I think uh, every time you're playing against uh, good guy, good defensemen like Chelio, Suter, and uh, these guys, you have to make sure you, you try to finish your hits and, and uh, try to wear them down. They're going to be out on the ice a lot, and, and you, you have to try to take uh, advantage of it. Matt Sundin, two goals tonight. Congratulations. Thanks. Matt Sundin and the Leafs win at 5-3. Right now, let's go back to Ron in Toronto. With Don Cherry, what about that game? Well, you give Sundin chances, Andrew Chuck chances, you're dead. Uh, Belfour was not ready. I don't know what happened. Uh, they've got his number somehow. They've got his number. Pat Burns pretty smart and pretty sharp. How'd you like that jacket he had on? Cashmere. He played Gilmore at one time, four minutes straight. That's exactly what Gilmore needs. Okay, at Calgary, Tom Harrington's got the number one star of that game with a two-goal performance, Jamie Baker. So, Tom, over to you. Thanks a lot, Ron, and uh, nothing like making it exciting at the end of the game. The Sharks protecting a one-goal lead, and Arthur Zerbe goes for a walk. What happened? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really watch it. I, I was so tired. I just put my head down and looked back at the last second. They dumped it in, and the boards are so lively here in Calgary. Uh, already, uh, I don't know, I think he thought maybe he could get it in Dolphin. <laughs> I don't know. I'm giving it to Tug McGraw, <laughs> the heart palpations. But, uh, Big win for you guys. 5-4, uh, come into the building. You've won the first game in every series you've been in. What happened tonight? Well, I mean, I think in the first period uh, we got some uh, breaks and we uh, scored on some of our chances. Uh, it's, it's just that's the character of this team. You know, we, we sometimes don't outplay the other teams, but uh, if we're lucky, we can score on some chances. We get great goaltending. Uh, we got a power play goal in the first period, and, uh, we, you know, we just kind of carried it, uh, you know, the rest of the way from there. Jamie Baker, two goals, not bad for a guy the Ottawa Senators yeah. apparently didn't want. San Jose Sharks are on top. Way to go, Jamie. Thank you very Let's much. send it back to Ron McLean at the Broadcast Center in Toronto. Ron. Thanks, Tom, and way to go, Jamie. 5-4, same score that San Jose won their game at Detroit last year to begin the playoffs, and Robert Reichel, a heartbreaker to finish things. This sounds a lot like uh, 1994, doesn't it? More from the Broadcast Center on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC in a moment. Very impressive, up-to-date. Actually, thing hasn't worked. It's been in every shot for two days. hasn't worked, but uh, we'll get that sorted out. Other than that, the sensational games on Hockey Night in Canada. More to follow. The New York Rangers and Quebec is tomorrow evening nationwide at 7.30. Joe Sackick, the hero of last night's game, paces Nordiques with a one-game lead. The rest of it Tuesday night's a little complicated. Toronto, Chicago, that goes Saskatchewan East at 8.30 Eastern time. For viewers in British Columbia, you'll see the game, well, first of all, for you in Alberta, you'll see the game between the San Jose Sharks and the Calgary Flames. That's at 5.30 or 7.30 Mountain Time. 
Vancouver and St. Louis. That one goes to British Columbia. And that's at 5.30 PT. If I had my computer, it would have been a lot more simple. Tremendous night. Uh, thanks to all of you for watching and from all of us. So long.
system delivers its first superior cut before you've put its legendary durability to the test.